Welcome to Hot Takes, everybody. It is I, Young Shiro, along with my cohort and co-host, Skeleton Lipstick. Say hi to the people, Skelly. Oh, hello, Skelly. <laughs> Welcome to Hot Takes. Uh, we have a very special, what I like to call, remix episode. I don't know if I uh, didn't get a chance to chat with you about the branding, Chris. Hope you like that. Uh, I love it. Remix. We're going to bring on two guests from prior episodes. We got Limerence, formerly known as Patch Notes, who has rebranded and put on a new face and a whole facelift and everything and shaved the mustache. And, you know, we got some, some great, exciting things going on up in uh, Portland with Limerence. So we're super excited to jump in and chat with them about all that. And then after that, at the top of the hour, we got Christ. Everybody knows and remembers Christ. So we're excited to to bring these two lovely veterans and friends of the show back on. All Skelly's idea. Great, great idea, man. Um, <clears throat> just wanna, yeah, yeah. No, just want to remind, well, we want to thank everybody for being here, uh, whether you're a, a mod, whether you're a new new chatter, whether you're an OG. I see you, and I appreciate you being here. Uh, go ahead and help us uh, help us bring some more people in here. If you guys don't mind, tweet, post on Facebook, uh, Instagram, invite a friend. Um and just remember, we got we got commands y'all can use throughout the show that I'm gonna just throw in the chat real quick right now, uh, and then any, any sort of like emote that you use goes on the screen. So uh, be liberal with those emotes, y'all. We're gonna have a little bit of a free form episode today. Um, we're gonna dispense with the biographicals because everybody knows everybody who is a a who's been you know tuning in knows who. Limerence and Christ are, so we're just going to jump right in and start just rapping with the boys and the girls and everybody in between and uh, just kind of, you know, get to just have a good time tonight. So keep those questions rolling in chat. Uh, I'm going to try to keep those questions asked, Skelly, if that's okay with you. <clears throat> um, you know, even if it even if it interrupt, interrupts us, obviously we want to keep that live experience uh, as a top priority. Keep me in the know about audio levels. If anyone's too loud or too quiet, please just drop it in the chat. And um, as a just final reminder, punching down, not okay. Punching up, okay. And in fact, encouraged. All op all, uh, all opinions are, are equal and welcome. Uh, we're going to start tonight off with a couple of recommendations by myself. Uh, as you know, I, I dig in the crates daily. Or if you did not know that, I do. I dig in the crates daily. Uh, and I've got my feet in a lot of different scenes, mostly independent electronic music. Uh, so I have three recommendations that I found over the past... Uh, couple weeks past month that i want to share with you guys excuse me one of them is by a um kind of like a funk slash lo-fi house guy uh who goes by the name of hp shoddy it's got a uh, a, a well-known um side project called dj bog shout out mission indigo out of austin texas for introducing me to dj bog uh Tryptophan, old fan, old friend of mine, um, described DJ Bog, or I think I think he and I together described DJ Bog as being like, ah, oh shit. How did we describe it? It's like, it's like if if Vaporwave used Memphis House samples, Memphis House, Memphis rap samples, um, which I think is is probably definitely a staple of funk music if you listen to funk. Um, but there's not as much crossover as I would like, and I think DJ Bog is particularly good at that specific genre bending and blending. And he's got a little bit of like a lo-fi house kind of edge to it. So I want to recommend uh, an album that was considered album of the year by my dear friend Tryptophan, and that's uh, Forever by DJ Bog. Nice. Check it out. And if you like funk, lo-fi house, or Vaporwave, you know, like hip-hop and rap-influenced Vaporwave, check out anything from that label. Uh the name is escaping me, but it's good stuff. Uh, secondly, I'd like to recommend a uh, another lo-fi house kind of influenced artist um, that actually appeared, I believe, on a Doom mix. If memory serves me correctly, an artist called Phones, F O A N S, like like Foles, like baby baby ponies, but with an N instead of an L. Phones, um, uh, from the Denver area, makes kind of like a really lush kind of like. Like, like, like a verdant, kind of arboreal type of lo-fi house, uh, reminiscent of, like, Body Son or Akasha System or Pacific Coliseum. And I've been digging Phones stuff uh, ever since I discovered it. And uh, some of it is a little more lo-fi, uh, and others is just a little more, like, like melodic or whatever. Um, the kind of stuff you would expect to find on, like, uh, LIES Records, uh, you know, but not run by a total shithead. Check out Selected Classics by Phones. 
if you want to get into some more lo-fi house type beats. And then, uh, I gosh, I didn't I didn't really recommend any vaporwave. That's okay. Um, no, it's fine. For my like left field recommendation, um, anybody that's a fan, I feel like breakcore is either like a love it or hate it thing. You know, really especially is, like yeah. the the depressive breakcore, the atmospheric breakcore that's you know heralded, of course, by acts like Sewer Slut, uh, is 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 kind of a the divisive genre. Um, and that's that's not even mentioning uh, the the more problematic subgenres. But I feel like when you find the good stuff, it's real good. And um, for fans of breakcore or just you know the depressive and atmospheric. Sewer slut esque, for lack of a better phrase, breakcore, but without all the the problematic shit. I wanna, I wanna strongly recommend Glitch Trode, who actually is kind of vapor adjacent. Like I've chatted with them a little bit, and they're familiar with with the vaporwave scene. Uh, it's not vaporwave music, but if you if you fuck with stuff like Sewer Slut, but but don't want to support, check out All Things Good and Bad by Glitch Trode. It's pretty pretty violent stuff but in a really good way very melodic nice. very atmospheric some strong melodies um and i i can't recommend it enough um especially because you know i am unfortunately a bit of a sewer slut fan despite their their problematic behavior um just i don't give them my money but i will gladly give glitch trode my money so check out that album if you like that kind of stuff anyways i said i would brush to the intro and didn't so i'm gonna yeah he probably would get mad sorry uh don't want to compare <laughs> artists. I know it's it's kind of that's another conversation. Like, do you want to compare artists to other artists? A lot of people don't care for that. Just saying, if you like that, topic. check this out. That's all I can say. And Skelly I mean, has Skelly's here with the hottest of the hot takes today. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'll make it quick because I do want to get to uh, to our friends today. So, all right. I think that I was watching the television the other day and not the television the streaming service and i came across a a new advertisement for i think doordash with lil wayne and he is shilling shilling like a pizza deal or something mm -hmm. and it was very silly and i was very goofy and i was like this is ridiculous like i can't believe we've gotten to a point where like it's okay and that we we don't care how silly artists look when they do things and it's just, it, 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 it kind of made me feel a certain way but that's not actually my big problem. My big problem is that we really, we really need to start holding bigger artists accountable for shilling things to us. Um, we used to call people sellouts when they did this, and I'm not really targeting that pizza commercial, but it made me think that you know when we make it make it so this sort of stuff is okay, we eventually make it okay for what was a big problem a couple years ago, which was all these celebrities backing these fucking scam NFTs that were just sort of like rip-offs of yeah. Bored Ape, like silly cats or, I don't know, <laughs> goofy pelicans or stoned eels. I don't know. But like there were so many different celebrities. Like I, I feel like Soldier Boy like did like 10 of them. And like, but there were so many different celebrities from like, like fucking like Fred, Ver Fred Durst, like didn't like Fred Durst, like Neo to just like different streamers. Everybody just backing these fucking weird crypto uh, fucking shit and like they're worth nothing now and nobody's held accountable for it and we hold artists Damn, yeah. accountable for everything these days but we don't they seem to always get away with this stuff and i don't know why but i feel like that this is the sort of thing that affects everybody and it doesn't matter what the background is what your creed is what orientation or what your background is like everybody is a victim of this and nobody gets held for it. Nobody gets 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 called to take to take into task for it. Nobody gets called out for it. Nobody gets canceled for it. And I really think Not that cool. we need to start calling people sellouts again. I am so fucking tired of this post two thousand late two thousands world where if I call someone a sellout, I'm an asshole. I'm pretentious. I'm the one who has the problem. No, you stopped us <laughs> from calling people sellouts. You all like the, the world stopped me from calling people sellouts and call me a pretentious asshole for doing that. And because of that, now motherfuckers are scamming you out of mil out of all your money, and no one cares anymore. Because it's okay. That's okay. Artists gotta eat. Artists gotta eat. Yeah. Okay. But at what point? At what point does it? Artists gotta eat. Artists gotta make their bread. And artists are fucking scamming you. This is a we live yeah. in a scam economy now. Okay. And these celebrities are full culprits in it. And I'm sick and tired of it. And I'm, they need to get canceled for this shit. 
they if they're going to throw their name behind this bullshit where they're going to scam you out of your money tell you that you got to invest in this push you because know, you trust them because you like their music because you respect them and they're taking advantage of you and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from it affects everybody they need to be fucking canceled for this shit i'm tired of it i'm tired yeah. of it. i'm calling people sellouts again and i don't fucking care i don't care if i look pretentious for doing it fuck this shit man we've let it get out of hand i'm done Thanks. Sellouts. fuck you stop scamming people out of their money <laughs> Stop the fucking, this was, it was ridiculous. Like, there were so many and like, nobody cared. And like the people, and it was like, you know, first you allow big corporations to take advantage of them and, and to make money off them, that's fine. But then it's just like, that opens the floodgates for just like rich, pay them a lot of money. And they don't see any difference between that, between when Sprite pays them a lot of money or when some fucking weird people from the dark web give them money to yeah. like, to the fucking like push their weird shit that they're gonna sell that they're gonna scam to you and then disappear with your money and then <laughs> no one cares and they're then they just say oh i didn't know oh fuck you man i'm sorry we've made it we've become too permissive you know Damn, what I mean? we've become too permissive with this fucking shit it's like you know ever since like the poptimism era we've become too permissive with people like not caring about sponsorship not caring about major labels not care fuck this i'm done with it if you fucking scam people you're canceled <laughs> fuck it next all right fuck anyway. yeah yeah. Ain't capitalism grand. Yeah, this is the worst. This is the most capitalist bullshit ever. And like, but we don't, we don't take people to task enough for it. This is the most evil capitalist shit ever. And yet we, <laughs> we, we turn a blind eye to it. Definitely some and class consciousness in that conversation. And we're so distracted by everything else. But this one, this <clears throat> thing is affecting everybody, making everybody's life more miserable. Everybody's <laughs> a victim of it. It's the most capitalist garbage ever. And we don't take anyone to task for it. Anyway, start. Fucking Puff, get the Puffin anyway. Bill Grooves says this is like the scene in the network where the guy goes, I'm as mad as hell I'm as and I'm as not going to take, take it anymore. It anymore. <laughs> I want oh, you to get really... up out of your chair and I want you to open your windows and yell. <laughs> what's, um, and then like, um, what's this fuck? Uh, oh, God, who's that? Who's the one? And then he gets caught. He's like, you, what? And he gets like, at the end of the movie, he gets confronted by the, the head of the corporation mm. played by, ah, uh, great character Wild. actor. What's his name? Yeah, yeah, the name's escaping me now. too. That's a good movie. I guess now would be a good time. You want to go ahead and bring on our first guest of the night? Mr. Yeah, Lemmers. let's bring him on. All right, Kyle. Let me go ahead and take down the screensaver and say hello to everybody. Hey, guys. Well, welcome back to the show. Again. Absolutely. What do you think uh, about Skelly's take? I think that, yeah, like these like huge celebrities are definitely like need to get to a point where... Um, they're held accountable. I mean, Stop I, taking I, advantage of your fucking fans. Yeah, it's I mean, I think ridiculous. I think yeah. like a really prime example of that is like, and like people are starting to recognize it now. But like with Taylor Swift, like oh yeah, real shit. And like, I mean, we could Stop go like going. into like <laughs> constantly re-releasing. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like it's always like between there and like her house in the south and like her house yeah. in LA and her house in the south. Like it's like Baltimore back to like back I, to LA. Yeah. Detroit, back to LA. Philadelphia, back to LA. It was like just stay in a fucking nice hotel for one yeah. day. Yeah, she's got like a monopoly on like, I mean, just like tickets. She like makes like what millions of dollars per show, and like oh, yeah, I never realized like, that yeah. removing the monoculture would create a bigger monoculture. Like it's, it's crazy. Nuts. Like wait, what's the monoculture? Like, well, like, well it's like the monoculture mono? of fandoms. It, I don't know, man. This is a weird world we live in. It's either it's a it's an even bigger monoculture mm -hmm. and then weird fandoms everywhere. Yeah, yeah. true. What's a mono bizarre. What's a monoculture, guys? I'm sorry. A monoculture is what they used to refer I'm to when there the was not it's like a pre internet world when everyone got their information from like particular sources. You know what I mean? Like you experienced like so the radio or MTV, uh, you know, stuff like that. They consider uh -huh, like the pre internet. Gotcha. They think I'm getting that right. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I'm getting that correct. But now it's like they, they splintered it after the uh, internet happened. And it was pretty cool for a while because everything, information was just like everywhere and you could repurpose it. And then, you know, you had the very interesting time of the internet, which would be like the late 2000s, early 2010s. And now no we've culture. slowly sold that to companies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, no greater, no greater, you know, you know, it's Gross. interesting. Don't like it. Don't want it. Yeah, I mean, like, again, like, with, like, the ticket things, and it, like, plays into, like, Live Nation, and, um, I mean, that's a whole nother thing, but, like, mm -hmm. something that's happening in Portland right now is that the city of Portland um, recently approved a venue to be built here that oh, yeah. is primarily, like, Live Nation uh, mm -hmm. bookings and stuff, and is the music scene, for the most part, exist here? It's, like, kind of smaller... Um, 
organizations that are, are, are putting on these shows and it's uh i mean i think like this happening is you just kind of kind of potentially destroy like it's not necessarily like super independent anymore but there's a sense of independence um in the like in the, the last little here. bit of independence yeah. maybe at, i mean at like risk. yeah i haven't been in portland for a long time and like i understand that it's changed but as someone that's been um getting out and like playing live and stuff it's i definitely see like that sense of like that independence and not like being sucked into like the monopoly that is uh live nation so it's really uh unfortunate and hopefully we can stop it but who knows <laughs> it's funny we, we were not. calling live nation evil in like the late 90s like yeah. oh like yeah early, and like clear channel and shit. we got it now live nation but it's just uh, you know here we are and it's even more sprawling Guys, blow that chat up with questions for Limerence. Don't well, hold anyway, that. Um, okay, so how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I have... so you you really you really keep altering the sound, really keep expanding the palette. Yeah. You know? So I mean, I haven't really been writing a lot lately. I've been kind of like just um, getting out and playing shows and like kind of getting a grasp for that and like meeting people. Like I've met so many great artists out here like we're starting to like kind of build this thing i've been like hanging out with strip silence as we were talking about shout earlier out strip and silence. uh yes yeah, shout out strip silence and uh we went to uh this rooftop bar um last week um he has some connections there possibly and we're just like kind of like just trying to get like a a community or like just like a roster of people um in like the vaporwave or like vaporwave adjacent scene to like get out and do shows um it's been really fun i've i have met some people here uh in like going out and playing that are, are like in my friends group right now so yeah it's been like super fun um i've been like kind of holding off on doing music just to give myself a break i was really burned out for a long time but i'm starting to get back into it now um it's a little faster i think um and very like inspired by surprise, surprise, washed out. Um, nice. Uh, uh, you really threw me a curveball with that one. Watch that. Uh, uh, specifically. No. You wild man. Wow. Whoa. Specifically. Really, really, really stretching your influences up, huh? Oh, wow. Specifically man. Uh, within and without. So it's going to have like a lot more like the clubby elements, uh, like dancier shit um and i've been like slowly kind of getting back into it so i'm not i'm not really in a rush it's just been really fun to like get out and meet people play shows and do the thing you know hell yeah we got a bunch of food questions in chat dude three uh, different people my, have my a, favorite quesadilla ask questions. Is that this, yeah. this food truck called favorite Trace quesadilla Wars, fish town it's my neighborhood they live in and it's got my favorite quesadilla it's really good okay hard I you gotta go down to the food trucks where you gotta order in Spanish or pu fucking point. Yeah. Three sabores is really if you come to uh, Philadelphia, in Fish Town. You know, we'll all get. Yes. So they want to know your answer to that as well, Lemmy. Um, and by the way, you're welcome to ask us questions too. Oh, so I like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask this is a so, little bit. We're a little bit so more favorite today. quesadilla, I, I, I favorite I flavor of wings. Energy, you know, I'm favorite, so sorry. Favorite, favorite flavor, of, flavor wings. of wings. That's. Who asked that? Uh, I saw that. Did Strip, did Strip ask that one? No, Roche Corp did. <laughs> of course. Oh, Roche Corp. I owe him ah. wings. We have uh, a little small backstory with Mr. Roche Corp. For whatever Shout reason, we started Corp. sending uh, each other um, Instagram reels. Is like if this if this letter if this is the letter of so many of your friends, you owe them wings. Uh oh my um, god, that's you funny. Seen those? Nope. So we've been doing that. Um, okay. I'm like on some weird like uh, Instagram wing rabbit hole, I guess. But to answer that question, uh, oh, right. so okay. this is a backstory behind this. I get it now. Now answer, I know why we asked the question. To answer your question, um, so my favorite mm. wing, and it's absolutely disgusting, uh, but I take no shame in it. Um, my first job was at Pizza Hut, and uh, they have wings there, and yeah, I've just garlic been parmesan with them ever since. No, like it. I mean, really? I just like buffalo usually. I don't. That's really not like disgusting. I love wings. buffalo wings. <laughs> I thought you were about to say like I like when they're like a garlic parmesan. Wing. Some I like dry rub. I just like 
I, just, I yeah, hate dry, dry rub. I mean, dry no, no, no shame. I mean, lemon pepper hey, dry yeah, rub. Yeah, you listen, your opinions are your opinions. But yeah, just like. I mean, of really course, I am talking to a man right now who's like, Pizza Hut's the best wings. So I'm telling you, dude. I don't know it's about probably that. Not, but yeah, I have like some I I sentimental. To listen to your film. Say the a mental say block. Rambling sure. A lunatic. Yeah. I can talk so, about pizza. So, what are the time. best? Where are the best quesadillas and luxury stop, noise? Stop, Isaac. Maybe you want to talk about pizza for a while. Oh yeah. Everybody All right. Stop. My bad. I mean, luxury I'm, noise is question. Have, no, 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 no. You want to talk? Whitley, he's the guest. If he wants to talk You're about right. pizza, I'm sorry. Come on. I should get. Be a good host. I'm just kidding. You don't have to talk about pizza, but I just. This is, no, this we're is, going this is to. Fun, this is fun for me. I don't have to ask. I miss I Pizza ask, Hut like, when you could sit down and eat the be, salad and I sit to, there. I always have to be very deep. And I had the lamps. I have, to ab- I have to enter the abstract modes of my thinking when I when I do these things. I have to like think. Whenever I do like the, the these talk show, what's this show called again? Hot takes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> when I do hot takes, like I have to prepare myself usually because I'm like, all right, I gotta like I gotta like look into this person's soul. I've gotta like reach out, pull out their inspirations. You know what I mean? I gotta like. Kind of just, I, want, I gotta speak to their inner child and I have to speak to their soul. So this is nice. Now I can just say stupid shit and get mad at like NFTs. Anyway, oh, yeah. go ahead, talk. Are Do they serve quesadillas pizza at Pizza Hut? I don't know. It's I wish they did. Um, Are we still talking about pizza Hut? They have, they have like uh, pizza quesadillas, you know, the Pizzones. No, I don't know sir. If they still- <laughs> What? You mean like a like a, quesadillas like a calzones or pizza calzones, quesadillas? yeah, or like a no. strombo? What do they call it? Pazone. They're yeah. calzones. Pazone. And bro, you know what that yeah. reminds me of? Do you remember when Little Caesars had the fucking um, like the the crazy calzone oh. and it was like a stupid pizza calzone hybrid? Yeah. And it looks like Batman or like a big big old fucking diaper, like just like laid Lost open. Like Fifty cents. <laughs> yeah, it was it was I dude I got the crazy calzone because I wanted to try it so bad and it was terrible. Oh no. Yeah. Pizza diaper. Uh, pizza, <laughs> pizza diaper? That's disgusting. I yeah, hate, like let me send you a picture good. later. I hate on. that combination of words, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kinda good actually. It sounds like a pretty That's crazy that. fetish. Uh yeah. No. Um Subject. Stop. Hang on. Luxury Noise wants um, to know if you went full pop star, vulgar display of wealth, which hot chicken chain would you acquire hastily during an online fight with Drake? Uh, wait, wait, wait. There, wait. Oh, doesn't chain, Drake okay. own? Doesn't he have a stake in a hot chicken joint? Probably right. That's yeah. not right. That seems like. I him. think he like just like was like carelessly on. bought it. Lux, Lux Noise, you got to chime in on this. You know what I'm talking about. I need some help. Is it here. really called Drake's Dates? He owns it. He owns yeah. Dave's Hot Chicken. You're shitting me. Yeah. No, fucking, he uh, did you know really? every Dave's Hot Chicken one? has the like the rubber chicken behind the counter, and it's in like one of those it break like, glass. Damn it, man! It These weird. people are so set. They have everything. I love. I love that place. Uh, Luxury Noise yeah, actually got me into that know. place. Unreal. It was like, yeah, he was like talking about like um, getting some hot chicken. Ruth's his, Chris's his, Steakhouse. His partner. And like, I was like, oh shit, it's a chain. They have it here, so like, I get it all the time now. Um, I don't it's know a little the question, too but... flavorful for me, but you it's think? not terrible. Yeah, What's man, I'm no, I don't have a refined palate. But Skelly, if you had Dave's hot chicken, I, I feel like you, it's just too much flavor, like too much. I've had, I've had Dave's that's hot chicken. That's the whitest thing you probably ever heard me too. say, but it's just like too much seasoning. No, I think that's fine. I honestly, there can be too much. There can be too much. You know what I mean? I Sometimes agree. I, I don't really need too much either. Um, unless like, particularly if it's American food, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm usually okay with like whatever the American, like if I'm having Indian food or I'm having, I don't know, like, uh, you know, something of that nature, uh, I don't know, something like Malaysian or something. Yeah. I don't mind when they like, you know, cause it's different, um, goes a long way, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I'll have to think about it. Damn. Anyway. Well, um, may I remind yeah, everyone that I all would, opinions are valid and welcome. Even I stupid would, ones. I would acquire... I would acquire Dave's hot chicken and fight Drake to the death. How are you going to do that? He already it's owns Dave. it. What, what weapon would... are you going to use to fight him to death? Um, Which Pizza Hut menu really item are you going to use? I would use the Pizza use? Hut, the entire Pizza Hut buffet. Oh, good That's move. That's a cool the entire uh-huh. thing. Not fair. Isaac, if you were going to challenge someone to a duel, what weapon would you use? I would just use like 
like a the crate Pistol? like a fucking like rail I, gun something crazy I like that a whale like, gun like a harpoon a rail gun not a whale gun like oh, i'm like fucking so. captain so ahab looking gun. ass i'm like well that would be a harpoon right a whale gun if Project i was challenging someone to a duel like there's no way to like why don't i just use a nuclear warhead bro like why don't i use I one of those use, satellites because, like, like beams down a lot of other people who use the nuclear that's warhead. a good point like okay that. we don't want any collateral damage you know i used to be a nationally ranked fencer yeah, really? I mentioned that to somebody the other day, actually. I did. I did. I, saber was my weapon. Uh-huh. A saber. I so love we that. ever have wow. to, like, resort What's the to, difference like, between a saber warfare? and a cutlass? Oh, right. oh, I mean, the saber... Well, cutlass is just, like, a type of blade. The saber is actually okay. a type of handle. The saber comes around like this. It's, oh. It has the bell guard over the hand. And the saber... The set of rules with fencing when you're using a saber is it's... um. So there's epi, epi foil and saber. And foil has like certain oh, yeah, areas yeah. where you're your targets on the body, and that's like it's a lot of like twisty movements with the hands mm-hmm. like this. Yeah, I've seen that. And in Epe, everything is a target, so it's nobody really even moves a lot in Epe because everything's a target. But in Saber, it's everything above the waist, and the parries and thrusts and reposes are like big movements. They look more like the ones you'd see in a movie when like you're like moving like this, like, and, like that. you slash with the blade. So it's the one that looks the most like, like coolest, and that's the one I used to do. I bet. And, uh, you should uh, you should put some of that shit on your Insta videos of your no your, i don't uh, do it anymore i i just like i wanted to get like, no i mean I, like like old videos of your your meets because, i'm sure well, your parents I, well, I have videos I, I wanted to get into i was trying to get into a good college and i figured this would be like mm. a way to do it like because if i got good at this <clears> sport uh it would be an interesting one to put on my resume and i figured that most of the really good colleges only the only the, the snobby colleges had like a oh that's crazy team with varsity yeah, yeah. so like i figured if i could like that would help my application and it did you know i got into pen through it right so like and then as soon as I got there, I quit the team immediately. I was like, fucking suckers. <laughs> <laughs> you That's suck. funny. You thought I was going to do this? <laughs> you hear more? <laughs> nope, I'm not spending my time. I'm glad it wasn't contingent. I'm glad your like, scholarship wasn't night, contingent upon that. All day while I'm in college. I'm going to join a sports team in college. What am I, a fucking idiot? Stupid. <laughs> Did, was Why there like a, not a scholarship or something? Like, a, what? Didn't you get like a like a scholarship or something for, no, for being? No, I really think schools don't give out scholarships for this Oh, they shit. don't? No, of course See, not. No, not my for this. Uh, tax not bracket me. is showing. Ooh. No, hey, they're not gotta... gonna do. They're just not gonna like give you any kind of break, you know, for for fencing. Like no, <laughs> but it just helped my helped your application. And um, I quit immediately when I got in because I don't want to. I don't want to spend every day after I'm done classes going and like hanging out with a fencing team and like fencing for like. What all... they're not cool when dudes. I high, when I was in high school, I, it, they didn't have it at like my. You know, I went to like a, there was like a club in my my hometown that. That's where I, I just that. Didn't have like a high school team for that. Or I went to public school. Didn't have like a high school team for that. But like, you know, I only did it. For, it was fun though. It's cool. It's a cool skill to have. It's fun. It's a fun thing to tell people. But um, I don't know. I can't imagine being on like a sports team in college and like dedicating so much time and effort to that. I mean, God bless you if you do. But like, I just, <laughs> so much time. Yeah, you know same. what I mean? Like, why? And then you have to hang out with those people. Great question in chat by Puff and Bill Grooves. Subtle segue to music. Name a spice or food and its VST or FX equivalent. Ooh. Oh, okay. boy. All right. Think about that one. That's a hard one. I can't okay. think of anything um, that's like I, I, super. I, okay, okay, hold on. Yeah, Maybe please chime to... in. <laughs> okay, um, it would be, um, hold on. I know what I want to say for this one. That filter. What is the effects for like dill? <laughs> uh, or curry or cumin? Okay, so no, it's going to be like, okay, so it's going to be like something I add to every, that you can add to anything to make it like a little bit spicier or like a different uh, guy, like okay. paprika. A little paprika, and, yeah. yeah. Like, the, that, like the OTT multiband filter setting up with the OTT thing. Holy yeah. shit, someone actually said OTT in chat already. Yeah, OTT, and then like, yeah, well, I'll add that, I'll add a little spice to the thing. What's gross beat? Oh, yeah, What's salt what? is sound good, Izer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. so I, would say, I would say MSG. I would go as far oh, okay. as to say MSG, MSG is like yeah. sound good, Izer. Or like, I don't know, like MSG and uh, RC30, maybe. Hmm. Something like that. Y'all producers in the chat got some reactions. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it just like it's like uh, MSG is auto tune, 
That's a good there, point. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's um, good. That's good. I'm going to say also for like, um, uh, hold on. I had one I was going to say. Um, let me think of a perfect space. Okay, like, um, something that really like radically alters the food in a way that like, Uh, I don't know. I like it's a hard like, question. I don't, know, like, salt. I don't know. Like I don't know. Maybe like Lowry's. LFO, maybe like sriracha yeah. with the LFO tool. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. I am not like super, honestly, like familiar with a ton of VSTs. So. It's okay. Honestly, I don't want to spend this whole show talking about food. We do that I, in the I, Discord I, I do, instead. I, <laughs> I want to know yeah. how important is album artwork to you, Limerence? Oh, very, very, very important. Um, what are some of your I favorite would... examples of good album artwork? Oh, Jesus. Um, one that comes to mind because I just saw them. Um, What's your favorite album? Oh, okay. Which album? Blue always, Rez? yeah. A L V V A Y S. Uh, Blue Res. That album art look is that amazing. Let me look at that um, shit. Whoa. Nope. Maybe I won't. I need Woo. to like look at some too. It's here. a good photo. Yeah, that is good. I'm That's thinking, really good. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can access my Spotify. All these in general has pretty good album covers, actually. Oh, so good. I think that, um, do you have a favorite album cover? I mean, obviously, like, I love every one of the One of Tricks Point Never album covers. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that new one is so good. (laughs) It's such a good, I know. It's like, I don't understand. It's so good. Um, Robert Beatty is good at what he does. Yeah. um, Trying to think here. One of my favorite album covers is... um, uh, I think it's one of the coolest albums. I, I think it's it's a very cool album cover. One of my favorite album covers is the uh, cover for um, "With Sympathy" by Ministry. Mm. Uh, I think I'm not that's familiar with that. I'm gonna look it up right now. Yeah. I think that's probably like the coolest goth album cover that's ever uh, been made. The "With Sympathy" album cover with it's like got the woman's oh finger, yeah you know, okay that the, is a pretty good the roses cover. over the marble yeah. with like the red yep. uh, you know fingernails and like oh, the, the black the black thing and like the, the, the way the hands look and the, the dropping the roses and the title with sympathy and um the marble i think that's the coolest looking goth album cover that's ever been made i also think that's probably the best new wave album ever made too is with sympathy that uh, is something that is high praise something yeah. that comes to mind for me i think that is... Alan, you, go ahead Oh, we don't need to talk um, about mystery right now. <laughs> is uh, Sunbather, Deaf Heaven. Interesting very choice. Okay. That's very, very, you know, that, that album cover looks like an like, album cover. That looks like a novel. The cover of like the way the mm-hmm. work, like a novel artwork, a novel's artwork. Yeah. Like, oh, the way wow. Looks. That looks like a washed out album cover. <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically, like, I, I forgot what interview I'm just it was, but around. like the pink color. Um, of the album is what you see when you're Very minimalistic through your eyelids. Oh, that's a good, I, I really good that, point. I think that the, the album cover for my upcoming record, I think that's one of the coolest album covers ever. I, I like what I've seen. Cool. You've seen the album. I cover. like I what I've seen cool. this far. I'll send it to you next. I think it's pretty cool. I think my favorite um, album cover is Yola Tango's and then nothing turned itself inside out. I don't know cover. why. Yeah. I don't know why. I just posted the link in chat. It's just a beautiful photo. I want to be there. Uh, my favorite all time, and I was trying to avoid this, but here we are. Um, washed out Paracosm. Washed out Paracosm oh, as your... No. Oh, no. Surprise. Five five minutes. Minutes. I can't go five You are minutes. a fanboy. Five minutes that I I'm talking about Washed Out. <clears throat> so can, if, um, if Washed Out made an NFT <laughs> I and it no, completely, I like... I do. I, I appreciate when kidding. people take the time to really study their favorite artists and yeah. appreciate every aspect. So, like, I have trem- I'm, I'm joking with you, but I have tremendous respect for that. You know what I mean? Thanks. Like, uh, that's pretty... That's, Ooh, you know, it's really good great... when you find artists you connect with and you, like, dive yeah. deep, deep into, like... Why, why you like them so much and you yeah. start figuring out the small nuances of it and i think that's yeah. that's a great i think that's a great thing to do in yeah, general it's, it's fun it's a fun little obsession cool, rose man. corp rose corp with the banger questions worst album cover of all time let's go 
Oh, okay. Holy oh, wait. Shit. Well, probably uh, that. What's that one? I know. It's that goddamn, like, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's album cover, which, um, with the mosquito on it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I remember they had talk- an amazing album cover with, uh, <clears throat> with, um, and that's another really great album cover um for like what's the, what's the song what's the name of the album um oh the album's called mosquito the one that you don't like yeah that one <laughs> that looks, looks like a garbage, it looks like a garbage <laughs> kid, kid card <laughs> and like it's terrible which is funny because like prior to that they had another amazing album cover for it's blitz with the with the, with the egg exploding dude the, the album cover for it's blitz is fantastic uh, with the hand holding the egg and it exploding. Okay, man. But I then they had why... like the worst album cover ever with uh, yeah, yeah. I think that that most recent like Black Flag album cover is terrible too. With the the, the Greg Jin did like a, a new Black Flag album a few years ago, and it's a terrible album cover for that. I think it's... <laughs> I've got to look that up too. Man, I am so sorry because I like this person a lot. But I was chatting with Christ, I think at I2K about like some of his favorite albums got, actually, on Christ Business, Business Christ Casual. Great album covers too, There's actually. this one I, album that was released by it's got all good album covers Sophia too. I, I HJKL semicolon eight nine zero one called Toilet Abstraction Tapes. I just <laughs> have to link this. I don't know why yeah. they made this album cover, but it's just like heavily artifacted, just messy, like. And then it's got like this like loose leaf like notebook paper with like a like just like really scratchy logos. This is and, actually, like, I'm I sorry, like, like oh you like, you this would because like there's so many albums. Kyle, covers go follow that like, link and see what you think about that. Yeah, album I'm cover. following it. This is I actually really like this album cover because he said, would really you funny, would actually. He said this, this is, is really great. Funny. This is really good actually because he because there's so many album covers which are just glitch artwork. You know what I mean? Like just like lazy glitch artwork where it's just like yeah. I just pixelated a bunch of stuff and it's like just like fucking like circuit bent glitch stuff and it's like kind of lazy and this looks like it's almost making fun of that okay fair i just don't like it maybe like it you either. know how it's sometimes really feeling you know how sometimes comedy like, like runs really the funny. risk of dumb people not knowing that it's like comedy and thinking that it's like in earnest there's like a name I, for I, that. I, I, maybe I, that's I what mean, happened I, I, it was just I like lost it on me because I, well i just understand i like it because i find it so abject and if, if sophia I mean? if you're listening right now i love you as a person and your work i just don't like that album artwork i'm sorry <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that aesthetic either <laughs> to be honest it it and, and they do some great work they they were like well anyways yeah it's just not my favorite oh look at you look at you Expatiating. Little, oh, it's still kid. good. It's all right. Uh, okay. Oh, atone more. <laughs> right. Uh, Lemmy, how do you uh, go about finding new music? Exp- expiating. And how often? Uh, like, uh, how often do you dig in the crates? Not much anymore. Really. Um, one of my, and I, I posted this in the server. One of my friends, uh, shout out to James. Um, who is San Gabriel? You should check out his music. It's really cool. Um, San Gabriel. Yeah. Uh, shout out San Gabriel. Um, got me on uh, Boys of the Summer. <laughs> the song. You talking summer? about like the Don? Yeah. It's Don Henley. The Don right? Henley yeah. song. I've yeah, yeah, you were posting that about like that the other days. day. That song fucks. Wait, like you just heard this recently? No, I heard it in the past, but something really resonated with me. It's You're a like, really good song. It's, it's, it's so song, good. It's, it's, it's very well because it's in the vein. So there's like a very specific '80s sound that I like, and that it like really nails it. It's like mm-hmm. songs like that, or like some Fleetwood Mac songs, like Little Lies. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then there's like some like uh, other like random songs, like uh, I don't it know. It reminds me like, of that Glenn Frey song, the "You Belong to the there's City." There's also song like "All from I Need Is a Miracle" Bryce. by Mike and the Mechanics, who is like one of the members of um, fucking uh, uh, what's phil collins but genesis it's like one of the guys from genesis side project um and like there's like that specific sort of like it's like not it's like i don't know it's not exactly adult contemporary but it's like because it's like a little too dreamy and sad to be that and that's like a that sound that you're talking about right now like that's was a tre- been a tremendous influence on me for like a yeah. bunch of songs that i've written and a bunch of things that i've like that like like feelings and thoughts in my mind so boys of summer nails it nails that's one yeah, that's really a great does. song but yeah, I'm like glad that, you're a like, fan. yeah, like I keep mentioning like that or like mm-hmm. Little Lies or like things like that. Yeah. Like it's there's songs like that that are in the eighties. I always try to like keep a little playlist of those specific types of songs. It's sort of like it's sort of like a um it's like a um oh man, how to do 
It's at the other end of Yacht Rock. Like you have Yacht Rock. Yeah. Over here. Okay. You have Yacht Rock. Yeah. I can. I can. Yeah. I feel that. At this I feel end that. of the fucking. At I'll this take end it. Of the fucking that. grid. And then on the other end is like that, whatever that is. Yeah. And like you know, with like older, older like guys. You've got like Kenny Loggins over there and like Gone. Oh Henry yeah, there. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, actually that's actually the best way that I can like. There's a really yeah. great Hoysa Auto song that flips uh, Boys of Summer. I'll have to send it to you. It's oh, yeah. really? Yeah, it's Damn. really good, in my opinion. Yes, please. I want to listen to that immediately. Shit, actually, I feel like... Did Maggie Dot Wave flip Boys of Summer? Yeah, Maggie Dot Wave used Boys of Summer in a really good song. Damn, I'm going to send you both. I mean, please. you could even stretch it to, like, there's, like, even some, like, probably some, like, some, like... You know, like you, 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 you know, along that same line of that kind of song is also maybe even like like Philadelphia by Bruce Springsteen or like mm. maybe uh, even even Dancing in the Dark a little bit too. Yeah, maybe it's like that, that's like that you, Dancing in the Dark is moving somewhere towards Yacht Rock and farther away from there on that on that line, but it's still like in that side of the grid. Yeah, it's a total vibe. They're like, like you know, they really like it's good stuff. It that's a great song. But Boys of Summer, I'm I'm very glad we get to. Hell yeah. uh, <laughs> How we did you hear to, it? To, or like, like, because I, 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 um, I too am besotted with that song. So, my friend again, James San Gabriel, um, he's been someone that I've been uh, playing out uh, like shows with a lot, and that's like one of his like go-to like driving home songs to just blast on the way home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so i guess that's how i like was reconnected with that song uh but to like go back to like um like how i find music i think like lately i've just been like kind of again like just playing out a lot lately and like um just connecting with Living people here. and just like listening to like people's music that i'm i'm playing with a lot of the time but I haven't like really like dug into like Spotify or done a deep dive on anything too much recently, to be honest. So is Damn. that your sad song that you listen to driving now? Is that one your sad like older artist song? <laughs> yeah. Because my, my mine is because my, my sad older artist song is Mandolin Rain. I don't think I've heard that one. Fuck you. Go listen to that right I'm now. Sorry. Fuck. God, God damn. Sorry. Mine is fucking... Go listen mine to is, Mandolin Rain. No. Go, and listen mine is Mandolin Woman in Chains Rain. by Tears for Fears. Listen, listen to that, too. Music on the lake. Listen I to mean, my heartbreak. Every time she runs away. Yeah. yeah go listen to that. Oh, we got some great questions playlist. in chat. But yeah, listen to that and listen to Woman in Chains by Tears for Fears. Oh, I know that one. That was uh, sampled on... Uh... Uh, yeah, Echo Jams uh, B7. Yes. Yeah. Banger. Love that song. Oddity 3 with a uh, great question. Uh, you mentioned Portland. How's Portland's vapor scene right now? Growing? It's Established? Growing. It's big potential? It's growing. Uh, I think there's Neat. like, Wait. there's, there's like really small Wait. pocket. Huh? Yeah. Oh, no. On. I just, there's someone's, uh, 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 Nikara fucking sucks is uh, talking, is asking if anybody listens to Sprams and, Yes, we listen to scraps. We listen to scraps in this house. In fact, yeah. we have. In fact, this is uh, this is an orchid tattoo, guys. That's an oh, orchid wow. tattoo. So yes, I do listen to scraps. As a combination of the Chaos Is Me album and the Dance Tonight Revolution Tomorrow wings on the cat. So yes, we listen to scraps. I that was my main music when I was growing up. Did you did you fuck with metalcore at all? Me? You and I had that, yeah, we had that short conversation oh, about I, Zayo I, the I, other I night. I came of age in that era, so yeah, of course. Yeah, I, you can't, you couldn't avoid Converge. And oh, I would want yeah. to avoid Converge. Yeah. The or song. like, you know, um, Poison the Well, or, you know, we were just talking like, about You talk Zayo, about Snapcase we? a lot. I saw Snapcase many times. Yeah, Zayo played in Nashville. Um, one of the guys from Will Wade's, uh, like, grindcore band, the Gallstones, Sean uh, designs um, posters. And he did this badass poster for Zayo, and I was sorely tempted to go watch them play, even though I'm not into metalcore at all anymore. You were telling me, like, it, should I go do this? I said you should. I really thought about it. Lemmy, did you ever fuck with anything like that? Like Norma Jean or, like, uh, you know, Converge, like he said. Dillinger really. Escape Plan. I mean, they were probably uh, not, not so really. much. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, but, uh, sorry. What are you saying? No, that's okay. Um,. There's that one album that's well, like it's I got like just Sprams a picture of the woman Sprams on the cover. But yeah. So, so yeah, it's the, I really like. 
I'm sorry. Go you're good. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't uh, have an answer for you. You just said fuck you to this I'm, man. I'm asking him questions he doesn't know the answer to. We're just wasting your uh, time. I guess just to go back to like the Portland scene, like uh, Frank Jeffs yeah. mentioned in the chat that uh, he had a show with Hotel Pools um, and Sitting on Turtles uh, like last right. month. And that was a banger. Um, our friend Abel, the alien, set up that show, and he's he's uh, that met guy with seems him. really sweet. Uh, he is really sweet. Um, he's just like a really kind guy, and uh, we've been like hanging out a bit and like kind of like coming up with ideas. He was actually at that rooftop. Uh, oh bar hell yeah! The other night, and we were just like kind of like talking about. Like, he seems like he's pretty what hungry to do. help grow. Grow the scene. Oh yeah, he's been like he's been like really facilitating like again like that Frank Jowsey hotel pool show like he Ooh. has a really good knack for like facilitating that kind of stuff so I'm like really excited to see what comes out of that but yeah I mean we've just been the the vapor scene here like I've I know it's there it's just like kind of like making those connections like I've I've met a lot of um, people through like strip silence like I met this guy. Um, that does like Sonic the Hedgehog uh, themed DJ sets. His uh, oh hell yeah! His name is D DJ J uh, John Sonic, and it was his first show at this club that we played <laughs> what at. What does that mean? A D what does a Sonic themed DJ set mean? DJ John Sonic. Sonic? Or is it just only like, Sonic music? Yeah, kind of, but it's like really fire, and we. Like... Oh, I'm sure it is. So Sonic. you know how they have those oh, Shrek raves, sure Skelly? It awesome. It's like that, yeah. except Sonic themed. It's like what? Yeah, kind I'm of, joking. Yeah. What's it like? So I, you remember how I was talking about like the Shrek raves, and you were like, "Oh, I would never play one of those." I, wanna, I, 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 <laughs> I, I was it. like, oh, "It's no, one I of those, have, but Sonic themed." Don't see it on the stream. I oh well, it. hey, <laughs> sorry. Like, I thought that? it was funny. Well, I did too. <laughs> oh my I god, it's okay. We can edit it out and post. No, you can't. No, you won't. You son of a bitch. <laughs> no, you're right. You've made a fool of me for the last time. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> this, this, this professional. This professional partnership. This professional sure. veneer has, has fallen. The scales the, the have fallen from fallen. my they eyes. Don't actually know behind the scenes, me, yeah. and, me and Isaac are fighting like cats and dogs. Yeah. Every time yeah. I'm like, hey, do you want to do? I got to do the recs tonight. No, I want to do the recommendation. I love the fact that I love the fact right now that I don't have to ask people deep questions. I'm sorry. Shut up. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Shut the fuck All up. All right. Keep keeping. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say no one asked? <laughs> All right, uh, let's 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 talk about some nice things. Um, can you shout out? You, you mentioned San Gabriel. Uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned Abel the Alien, um, John mm -hmm. Sonic. Shout out some more mm -hmm. lesser known artists that everybody All in right, here needs me, to be uh, like. Put us on. Here. Um, so, oh, speaking of shows, um, I have. And I, I believe you guys had him on the show. Um, he used to go as fashionista boyfriend. Oh yeah, now, I love that uh, guy. Inner, inner nature. Um, he's he's coming to town. Um, this Friday we're gonna play a show together. Yes. Um, and then also. Well, who's coming um, to town? Wait, wait. Uh, uh, fashionista inner boyfriend. Nature. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're, we're gonna yeah. play a show together. Um, let me see here. Uh, His track on Hot Takes Volume One was Absolute Flames. It's got a here, beautiful yeah. voice. Uh, yeah, it really was. Oh, really I great got work. some. I got some other shout outs here. Um, so like I've been like, I started like this Discord for like. Um, Thanks for the invite. Portland-based musicians. Oh, okay. I, anyone can come. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> um, anyone can come. Oh, all right. I don't want to go anymore now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Fine. Boo. The bar is way too low now. Um, I'm also, I'm yeah, also playing I, with I was Moon once Talk. a world famous fencer, like you know. So exactly. I mean, I didn't become a nationally ranked fencer <laughs> just so I could hang out with the hoi polite. So I could go to any show. I'm sorry. Who was the person you shouted out? Uh, Moon Talk is another person. Moon that Talk. I, I just Moon Talk. Met. That's a cool name. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, I like that. Um, let's see here. Uh, I've been hanging out with Darian Shields a bunch. Darian really Shields. Great oh, guy. Uh, shout out Darian. Love I think him. He's in the chat right now. Um, yeah, he just came out with a new album like a couple days ago. That's like not. Oh, he did. Oh, he's been not, collabing with Strip out. lately, I, I, I think. I love checking out everything he does. It's, uh, I, still, I was not... supposed to work with him a long time. I, I still, I never got a chance to work with him again because I, I was going to do some work for him and then this album's coming out too soon. So hopefully I get another chance to work with that gentleman again. Yeah, it's not like super <clears throat> similar to like a lot of stuff that he's done. Cool. Uh, but it's it's really fire. So I suggest uh, you guys check that out. 
Um, another person, uh, Aura Dev. Aura um, Dev. Kind of vaporwave adjacent. I recently met. Um, yeah, it's like more like dancey, like a, a more like housey vaporwave. But that dude's really awesome. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's like the the kind of like the the core friends group, I suppose. But. And there's like a bunch of other people that I've met are just like really fucking terrible with names. Um, we recently Same. went Real to, um, we have some friends that are kind of in the, um, more on the synth wave side of, of the spectrum. Yeah, we, we, lo um, we love our synth wave kings. Yeah, and, and like we, and others. yeah, we recently connected and with them and uh, they like took us up to this bar in Vancouver uh, that's like Ooh. synth wave themed. Uh, Vancouver, oh, really? Washington, Vancouver? Washington. Um, but yeah, we just like kind of like kind of again like expanding and like kind of connecting up. I think like the 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 synthwave scene is definitely a little bit more established than the vaporwave scene. But I mean, it's all adjacent, so I think it's like really important that we all link up and like network and like do all of those things. You know, I mean, it's all based on a love of nostalgia, right? Exactly. Little Vice Very Bar. Cool. A little vice bar is the bar. Yeah. Oh, that's a little vice. Oh, that's a cool ass name. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, sick. Like Check out a little vice bar in Vancouver, Washington, not British Columbia. Not British Columbia. The one in Washington's way cooler. Shots fired. <laughs> <Yeah>. Facts. <laughs> You're Damn, here for I don't know if there's one in there in, in, there in uh, British Columbia. British but... Columbia not afraid to put it on record. I don't know if it exists right. there. Right. Over here, just like does, banging his fist on the counter. Yeah, right exactly. On hot takes. You can't see, but like in the background, he's just got like a big like picture of like a like a mounty with like a you know just hanging from a from a fucking lamp post with guns pointed at him. <laughs> he hates those guys so much. Hates them so much. Before we were on stage in the green room, that's all he would talk about. In between talking about washed out, he just talked about how much he hates British Columbia. Oh I my god. It. Are we huh? <laughs> Let me tell know, me the man. story I behind the I'm, I'm not doing most... deep questions. I've got I've got no roadmap. I've right never now. been there. I'm sure it's a lovely place. I haven't been there. But... It's actually probably I I'm just kidding. I know you we, we all know you really do like Canada. We all like Canada. Canada's got a lot of cool people in it and I I've enjoyed it every time I've been there. Canada Toronto, Toronto, Canada has like some really great like uh musicians like from 90s early 2000s like the whole yeah, i mean mid 2000s scene. there was like i think i mean of course absolutely I think there's a lot yeah. of great artists that came out of there back in the day that whole super group i was like obsessed yeah, like, with that band for a while and like kind of like like feist is from that yeah like feist is yeah. something that oh was, yeah came that's out of that. True. metric um wait is broken social scene from there as well yeah yeah, yeah that's dude. right very They're cool from toronto yeah because yeah. I know Montreal kind of had a, a chokehold on all the, uh, like, Canadian, like, post-rock and, and indie rock bands. For, yeah. uh, I mean, like, I mean, then, like, also, oh, shit, like, uh, what's it called, like, Wolf Parade as well? You know what I mean? And then all the Wolf Parade side project bands that came from that? Yeah. There's, like, a lit act. Bro, you know yeah, I mean? that, that Broken Social scene is one of the best indie rock bands ever, in my opinion. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I shout out Videodrome. Thanks for of, rating. Uh, I have two copies of You Forgot It in People. Is, on it, vinyl. is it You Forgot It in People? <laughs> so, so hot take. I think their self titled album is better, oh but they're boy. both phenomenal. Okay. Like, I think I would put You that Forgot It two. in People's a 99, and Broken Social Scene's a 100. But I know that's I a hot take. I would put it the other way. Yeah, well, almo almost everybody would. I mean, and, and You Forgot It in People's so goddamn good. I know that the one song so that good. got popular was. Um, Anthems from a 17-year-old girl, but, like, there yeah. was so much more gold. Uh, Lover's Spit as well, but there's just so much so gold in. that's not those two songs. Yeah. Even though they are quite uh, good. All of it. Fuck yeah, yeah. Buddy. Do you ever, uh Do you ever, like, uh, keep up to date with, like, Kevin Drew? Or, no, like, man, his, I like, sure haven't. It's decent. It's decent. Is it? Well, you know, he and Brendan yeah. Canning had those, like, albums that were, like, Broken Social Scene Presents. Presents, and they were both, yeah. like, the, the, the Kevin Drew one was, was good. The Brendan Cannon was like, all right, you know, but like after yeah. that, I just kind of moved on to electronic yeah, music, you know. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did too. I had like yeah, brief moment of being like super into indie rock and uh, pretty much the same thing. It's just me. like and and, <laughs> and moved out of it. 
Oh man, A Greg saw Kevin Drew live. Man, I've seen Broken Social okay. Scene live twice, and they're an amazing time. They just like never run out of energy. They'll play for like two plus hours, and they don't care. They're like, we'll just keep going, you know. Oh, so much fun. <clears throat> yeah, I still haven't seen them, but oh, I you gotta to, go. Like, catch their like you forgot it and people like re uh anniversary to where yes. I unfortunately didn't get to go, but oh, that's disappointing. Oh man. Yeah, I'd love to see them. Yep, that highly, highly recommend. I think, I think that the time that I saw them with Do Make Say Think as the opener in Austin, Texas, at Stubbs, which is one of my favorite venues mm -hmm. in Austin, uh, in like 2006, was one of my favorite, like probably top five shows of all time. Just phenomenal. Um, okay. What is uh, what is your most popular track, and could you tell us the story behind creating it? Mine, uh, baby, 100%. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that one was just like that album, Golden Hour. Uh, yeah, I was like really album. coming, yeah, good coming out of like a really shitty spot, like came out like of a, a breakup. Yeah, um, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do too. I, I just like got into music and I think like the, for that one, it's just like um kind of like me getting my confidence back after coming back from like a really shitty place um yeah but i, th I think i could say that Love about that. the whole album i don't know yeah really yeah. good album really strong yeah. Start. right yeah, nice. yeah it, was, it was really fun to make it um i'm excited to get back into it again pretty soon um pretty very soon so. that's what i'm talking about i will be right back y'all keep that energy flowing for sure so chris i have a question yeah, for you yes. um oh, oh. go so on you you have Tuesday. you have your own like your own scene going on where you live and um okay. is, is someone that's like kind of like getting into like curating like shows and like just like booking shows and stuff like what advice would you give someone as far as like promotion for like shows? Because you like, I've seen some like some pictures like the stuff that you like. I believe you help kind of put together, and it's like the crowds are like ridiculous. So like, what you're would talking you about say? like with eclipse, with eclipse, yeah, right now, or, or yeah, like show back in the day. Yeah, um, I mean just anything. Like really, like what would you like suggest for like just like promoting or like putting oh, things together. Okay. Well, I would honestly say the best thing to do is well, I mean, I've already talked I think I've talked before about doing what, like little targeted ads where yeah. like you can like pick the cities around the city and send it to there rather than just do a radius, you know what I mean? Oh, but yeah. beyond so like whenever I would do the tar targeted ads, um I would just have them I wouldn't a lot of people would just click on the city that they're in and do like well, do like a 25 mile race. No, I'll take the time to click on the individual towns or suburbs around the city as well. Okay. And just to there, to there, to there, to there, rather than just do the little radius thing, because then each one of those gets its own radius. So that's fine. For, and then like, that's fine for if you want to do an advertisement. And then you see who comes after that. And then the most important thing is to talk to people and to yeah. be, be into, into make friends with everybody. And to, you know, you're, it's, it's really the, the success of any event you do is really dependent on, you know, how much people like you, you know what I mean? How many, how much people want to be, want to be with you, want to support what you do and like what you have to offer. So with Eclipse now, um, it's the same thing. I try to make friends with the people in, in the audience, because honestly, here's the thing is like, if I'm doing an event, I'm doing it because it's something I want to hear and I like. So probably yeah. the people who kind of come to it and want to go to it are probably going to like these things too. And they're probably just people I want to be friends with in the first place. So it's, it's like, you know, um, you would, should go out and just talk to people in the audience and make jokes and be happy and be somebody they can talk to and somebody that they can come to and that they like. So you, know, you sell yourself. Yeah, people. That's good. A party, a party or an event. If you're doing a party or an event, everything that's going, that party or event is you. It's a representation of you. So mm. the people that you draw to it, the way that it looks, the experience that people have at it, that is all the person who's the promoter sets the tone for the whole thing. 
and if the people have a good time on it and they're doing a really good time and they're having a great time and people enjoy themselves at it and they're nice and they're kind, then that's because you're emanating that out. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you go to a party and it's kind of grimy and gross and feels weird and the people are creepy and the, uh, the, <laughs> the vibe is strange and it's off and like nobody yeah. talks to each other and people are clicky or, or gross, like that's because the person saying it up is that, is that, that is, what that person is and that's why their party yeah. looks like that all right so if the party's yeah, fucking weird and the people cool. are weird and nobody knows each other it's grimy or ugly or dumb or like bad or like disorganized or stupid it's because the people who sang it up are grimy disgusting disorganized or stupid or boring <laughs> like so you know that's really what it comes down to is go work on yourself work on yourself yeah. if you work on yourself then you'll do better events sweet your that's events insane. aren't very Damn. good it's because you're not very good <laughs> yikes Damn, son. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I keep triggering the air horn sound at the worst like times. At that you're time makes sense. No, I'm kidding. I'm you're kidding. probably I've gross. Done many events where they have not done well. I'm joke. That last sentence was a joke. But I really am serious about like, yeah. work on yourself, and then you will have. Even if your events are small or not very well attended, then the people who go to them will be great, though. Then yeah. the few people who go will I be totally great. Agree. So totally it's, okay. but it's like, you know, it's hard. It's hard. And I remember you told me to build niche, a scene. Particularly like, if you're doing niche events, that's really hard. And particularly yeah. if you're doing a show and not a party, you know what I mean? A party is easy yeah. to sell to people. A show is yeah. hard to sell to people. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 like that's what you told me too. Like build a, build a following, build a culture, build a community around it. Yeah. That's hard though. I'm, I'm terrified. Not doing that at the moment. I book a show and I, nobody I'm not, shows I'm not doing up. That at the moment. Right now, I, I work with Riot Nerd and they, that's their thing. And I, they asked me to do Eclipse. And uh, so I'm, I got tired of doing my own stuff for a little while. Yeah. And I've been taking a break from that. It's stressful. And people are shitty. And you meet shitty people there and they turn the I don't want to get into it. But anyhow, like, you just, ugh. anyhow, I stopped that for a little bit. I'll get back into it eventually. But like, once gross people wash out, which they all will eventually, uh, and all oh horrible people. And that's the thing to also remember I've been in the, this world for a long time. Horrible wow. people or dishonest people or backstabbing people wash out eventually. They always do. They all do. I've been I've been around for years. They all wash out eventually. You know, it catches karma catches up to everybody. Speaking yeah. of wash out, yeah. so I mean, <laughs> but because I have very good karma, I'm able to. I have many of people, other people that I work with, and that do their own thing. So I work with Ryaner right now, who's done a great job at creating their own thing. They asked me to do a clips, and I wanted to listen to Witch House music on big speakers. So that's yeah. why I get to do that at clips. They were originally just going to be another goth party, and I'm like, ah, right, there's a lot of those. I want to play Witch House and Reds, and so now I get to do that. And that's uh -huh. good, but I'll get back to doing my own stuff soon because my album's coming out soon. So yeah, once that is October, out, right? I'm going to be doing nice. much more event, more events. So October. Lemmy, Lemmy, we got we got just a no. couple more minutes with you, bud. We got to bring on yeah. Christ here in a minute. I'm okay. sorry to cut this short, but oh, what's some things that you would like everybody to know here on your second uh, second circuit on hot takes? Anything you want to uh, promote? I mean, I think. Um... I guess I'll like go ahead and promote um, uh, the show on Friday. Beers, Brats, and Beats, Portland, Oregon. Hell yeah. Uh, 8 p.m., uh, Moon Talk, Strip Silence, um, Inner Nature, and myself are going to be playing. It's going to be a good time. Um, and also, like I think like what, what uh, I want to touch base with on with uh, what uh, Chris said is like, yeah, surround, surround your, yourself with like, with with good people um don't bother and, to ingratiate yourself to the people yeah. that aren't good when yeah. you stop being good don't bother to try yeah. win them back over let them die on the vine they yeah. will i promise and like <laughs> I, i'd also like to say is like you should like is someone that's like trying to like create or like kind of expand like the the scene that's happening here is like support your friends um, absolutely go to their shows um they'll come to your shows like uh juice them up like be there for your friends there's no reason to i know like how competitive it can be like this whole music thing but you don't gotta fucking do that yeah don't do it don't just, don't gotta do that don't don't don't, yeah. ooh, don't be a competitor don't try and look yeah. at competition i yeah. can't tell you how often That's i see fun. promoters in the city looking at other people and com thinking they need to compete with them you, yeah just no that's you'll never do interesting Love things that. if you just want to compete because then you're going to be so concerned with tr trying to win or compete and then yeah. you're not going to do cool stuff and nothing you do will be fun. You're just going to try and like aim towards the biggest audience. Don't do that. D just yeah, do, 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 do a really good thing for small, for a few people. Yeah. Do something really cool for really a few important. people. 
and I think I, I, I wouldn't say I know a lot of people that kind of have that mindset now because I've kind of separated myself from them. But um, yeah, just don't be a dick and support one another. It's important. Limerence, everybody. Thank you very, very much for joining us again on your second circuit on the Hot Takes Tour. Yeah. We love you very, very much and can't wait to see what's coming out of that show and your upcoming man. album releases you, as buddy. well. Thanks so much right. for coming back. And right, thanks, guys. go ahead and what? sign off. We told you you to get off. Shut up. Go you ahead. Yeah, just love you, buddy. Bye. Go ahead and sign off. We're going to bring Christ over. on. Everybody Bye. follow Larry. Bye, buddy. No, 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 oh, good. I'm glad we didn't. God, he's gone. I was there tired he is. Anyway. Oh no! So I manually uh, moved you in here, John. You can go ahead and bring yourself John. on cam. John, where, where's John? <laughs> oh, he left. Here he is. I'm sorry. Uh, I manually I added you. Button. No, no, you didn't press wrong, but that was me. Welcome to the show, Christ. What do you think about what's, what's... so? What's the haps? Hey, sorry, what's the haps? What do I think um, about what? Uh, well, we're, first of all, we're very excited to have you back. Already, already irritated. What do I think about what? Dude, oh, I speed yeah, run no, getting I, on this man's nerves. Come on. Yeah, it's like a yeah, sport at this I'm point. Yeah, no, you I'm, know, I, I, I'm watching this stream, and Chris, you just you just keep interrupting people, and I'm like, come on, dude. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll interrupt everybody. I'm, whatever. Oh. <laughs> you know there's a delay on Discord, but come on, dude. <laughs> That's funny. You know what, John? We were going to get off the damn show. I'm going to interrupt. He said, "Get off the damn show." You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't interrupt, you don't interrupt me. You interrupt <laughs> He'll me. don't no. do it. No, don't go anywhere, buddy. Don't go anywhere. Oh, no, oh, no, no, come no, on, no. no. <laughs> he fucking called sorry, your bluff. Sorry, I'll be quiet. I'll be good. I'll be good. Go ahead. Skelly, Skelly woke up and chose violence. Um, John, what do you think about? I did. did you I did. did you hear? I did. did you hear Chris's hot take about celebrities? I, I mean. Here's the thing, if you're, st I, I, if you're stupid, you're gonna buy into the NFT. If a celebrity but, is shilling. But no, but the thing is, like, if you're ill informed, you know, yeah. if you're if you're jumping into something, you have no idea what it is, you know. I mean, sure. The thing is, like, I get it. From like, you see these people, like some of these people who are like flipping this shit, making a ton of money. Yeah, that's great. You gotta get in early if you're gonna do that. Otherwise, yeah, you're. You're just, you know, fodder, you know, can fodder, basically, yeah. for, you know, the people who are, I mean, who are cashed out. And it's, like, it's really sad to see them being taken advantage of. Like, people who have a really big reach, that reach extends to people who... Yes, but... but uh, I, I, don't I, guess, have I, I guess my thought is, when when has, like, a... like I, I, I hate to say it, you know, I, I mean, use your common sense, like... Uh, 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 what's that guy's name? Jake Paul. Yeah. Oh my Job, God. Uh, what are the Paul brothers? They're like. Yeah, chilling. Jake and Logan. I, I was at the flea market this week, and this guy was selling uh, MetaZoo cards, which were like this MetaZoo. thing that he was shilling at the time. <laughs> Isn't it was that like that this, fiber like, supplement for old folks? Uh, you, you know what you think it would be, but uh, it's like a Pokemon ripoff, and it's like I think it's like it's supposed to be this cool like, throwbacky thing. I and I get it, but like, you, you, uh, let's be honest here. Who is going to care about this in twenty years when it's already banking on nostalgia for thirty years ago? You know. So yeah, that's a really good point. People, like, that's an example of point. like, you know, if you're buying, if you're the thing is, if Borrowed you're buying because you like it, if, well, if you buy because you like it, that's one thing. If you're buying it to flip it or you're buying it to do this, you either have to literally be quick like you either gotta like just come in get out you know take whatever little bit you can get and and do that or you gotta be ready to you know just eat shit <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> oh my fucking like, god these, it is a gamble people, they're, they're they're buying it because there's a celebrity that they look up to that's telling them that this is a, what something that's a good idea and not all, and and you know you're you're a person who is smart and is older and has experience with seeing these things not pan out but some of these people are young some of these people don't know any better and they're vulnerable you know what i mean and this is like kind of like a really shitty thing to do like a caveat and like, it's like thing. Like post malone and stuff this is like really big celebrities that you would not necessarily expect it from well but 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 that's the thing i mean you go into this i i mean really what is what 
what worth does a lot of this stuff that we have from artists anyways? What yeah. worth will like cause, cause again if you're buying this because you like it, that's that's a whole yeah, different thing than buying it Absolutely. to flip it in ten years or in five years or in five months, you know. That's 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 I, I think when people say, Oh, I'm getting scammed, no, it's people who are trying to flip it and trying to get rid of it just because they're trying to make a buck off it, not because they actually care about it or like it, you know. Mm-hmm. I, that kind of behavior has just always disappointed me in general. Like, why it's, buy it's two? Very, it's very exploitational of your audience. And the way that they talk about it and they post, like, man, this is going to be great. You got to buy this. It's going to make, it's going to the moon or whatever kind of fucking weird jargon. Now, that they, I, I, there you know, is they, definitely, they really do, there's really definitely the they predatory it. practices just, happening pred- in this sort of thing. But like, and I just feel like we, they don't, there's no, there's no consequence for them doing it. But I, what should happen? I, there, Jail I, time? A fine? Oh, oh, dude, I just think that they should get called out more for doing it, and yeah. I'm gonna exactly okay, yeah, yeah, some okay, social okay, pressure. But, but, uh, but they have been to to like, uh, I got called out for making NFT in like 2021. You know, that's it's why I like, wanted to know what your thoughts I lost, were. Like, I lost like 300 followers because of that shit. You know, and, oh, that's and that's what I had. Well, I mean, like, it, that's nuts. I lost. It's like I lost this in like two days, and I'm like, what? I. I joined this because honestly, you know, I'm an art guy. I'm into the digital art. I've always been the digital art, and for for the first time ever, I see a way to actually sell digital art, you know, and have it have like you know, uh, a a a uh, what's the word? Like a return like, on it, like your work. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how do you buy a GIF? How do you sell a GIF? You know, how do you like well, pe- people used to sell websites and that used to be the way to sort of sell, you know, a digital work or people used to sell USB sticks or uh, yeah. DVD or CD. I mean, there's, 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 stuff. there's a difference between like that, what they're shilling and then people like you who are creating something specific. You know what I mean? But like I, they're just shilling, you know what I mean? Yeah, true. Yeah. But they I, probably I, don't actually, I, I, they probably don't have a hand in creating it. That's all I was going to say. True. I, I guess for me. I, I see these people who are doing this, and like to me, it's obvious that, like, yeah, no, you, oh, you're getting obvious, raked yeah. over the coals. I mean, course, like, yeah. you're, you're stupid if, if you're buying into something that is. I think it's like if it's it's like buying into Beanie Babies versus <laughs> buying into, of course. you know. But but thing is, like, if you if you like it, if if you you know, that's that's when it becomes worth something, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. every nothing has value. Unless we put value to it, you know? facts. And if nobody that's likes why the, the stock thing, market, that's why the stock market works the way it does, like with perceived value. Well, I mean, that's that's what these collect. That's what the collectible market is: is the stock market, but just with a physical, tangible thing. Or in this case, NFTs, which is a sort it's of all, it's speculation. It's, it's, yeah. it's all speculation, yeah. you know. But if you enjoy, if you like the thing that you're buying, then who cares? I to say that you're scammed out of this. Is, it tells me you're doing it for the wrong reason, you know. You, you're doing it because you were, but you're doing it because you aren't. These these people are naive and they are convinced by celebrities, and the celebrities do hold sway over people. That's part of the thing that comes along with that is you hold sway. So you should just shouldn't abuse that power because a lot of people are dumb and I naive, and you I shouldn't let that. them get hurt so easily, and then there be no consequence. I agree with you, and I am like my initial my reaction is, of course, this is stupid. You should know better. But I also know that people are they, they some people need to be protected. You know what I mean? And there should be consequences for hurting vulnerable people. I, I or guess. not, whatever. I, I mean, or not. I guess. You know, some I people don't know. Learn. Some you people rate learn. your music I album I scores so, go down just, little by little yeah, with I mean, every I mean, NFT you know, shill. So, like, I guess some people got learned, but it still just kind of sucks. But I, I mean, I, I mean, the NFT maybe NFT I'm NFT being too. Thankfully. Thankfully, the type of people who were doing a lot of that stuff back in the day are out of the out of the yeah, scene. Yeah, I, I, I don't and, see it as often anymore. Because, because literally, yeah, nobody, everybody's smart enough now because they all learned their lesson. You know. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, right. shout out the people that didn't that taught shout us all. Out, shout out, shout yeah, out I, I didn't learn my lesson. I, I just bought NFT today, so I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> I still, I still when you learn, John. When That's you know? different, though. Can be cheap. You write you know, your own I music like and make your own art. It's just different. I like the new album a lot. It's good stuff. 
you, you know, I, I heard, I heard uh, last week that, uh, Shira, you didn't, you didn't listen to my Oh, album? no. You know, I was going to just, uh, I, I got it on you CD. Know, you know I, 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 I have it on CD. It's great. Do you know what, John? Uh, Here's why. I want to well, listen to I it when I'm in the right the mindset work. and when also, I can give it 100% like of my attention. Because when I is, take a really it, long time to like ruminate on music, and I don't want to do yeah, your I'm album just, a disservice. What's a disservice? <laughs> Giving it, like, <laughs> listening to it, listening to it while I'm like vacuuming, you know? Yeah, that's fine. The thing is, oh. like, I, I, well, I was thinking more of just like, you know. This this you know. album specifically is you know it it it's definitely has a concept to it, but I, I definitely meant to go more in a a route of just being ex openly accessible or more accessible than some. Sure. I thought this is the most fun album by far. Because, exactly, is it? You know, yeah. Yeah, it's very it, cool. Everything's got a pretty like. It is, oh I, my it's god! Got that quiz. driving beat that is like the my you know that that sort of like. A lot of the songs sort of sound like a war march. When, when John does see... music, that's like kind of like it, like it's this mid tempo like like rock, like rock groove. That's kind of like oh, a yeah. war march. You know? Shout it out! Sounds, it sounds like war. Whenever John does kind that of, does that kind of thing, like it, it, it sounds like a like it. Well, I, this is the third time I said that, but it sounds like war. And I always that's the kind of a sound I like. <laughs> Did you just read it? Yeah, yeah. I, I you know my uh, my arms are designed to root. Well, the thing is, like it, it's. This one, yeah, it's it's dark and it's got moments that really are kind of just like you know, oh jeez. But like, you, you kind of expect that with the Christ out, you know? Yeah, you kind like, of expect the Christ out. You're not going to be frolicking you know, like, through any flowers to this album. No, but but you could jam out to it though. It's a yeah, jamable yeah. out. You could vacuum um, to it, Isaac, and you'll you, get a great experience. Were Chris, you surprised? <laughs> Were you surprised when Newsworms became like like a huge, like like popular, like everyone loved it, or were you, was it designed that way? Was it designed what? Like, were you I, expecting I, 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 Newsworms to be kind of like a big single, like I, I like a well, rock okay. out you, single? Were you prepared for top forty radio play, John? <laughs> Say again. Were you prepared for top radio top forty radio play? It's it's not it's it's what is it even sitting at it's like it's not even that big honestly compared to like has it been used in tiktoks that. yet mm, not really oh, you know i, I mean yeah. i i i had the, the, the father you have a tiktok stuff, but... you, you do silly things on tiktok maybe you should do a tiktok for it <laughs> oh yeah the, the diana ross thing was <laughs> hilarious i i i, I don't know like uh, well first of all newsworms was uh uh for ad that was the album before mm -hmm. WWW and and I mean th that album that album's definitely a lot darker than well sonically it's darker than um, WWW but uh, I mean Newsworms I mean it's, it's it's not even in my top ten on on Spotify right now I mean it's, it's uh I mean it's it's a, I I didn't expect it to you know I don't really expect anything from my music I think the last yeah. time I expected stuff. I got severely disappointed. Yeah. So we're Maybe I'm online. using my own experience yeah, I, and confusing that. Alone online? Yeah, I, I think it's like I a lot of a lot of my buddies were starting to switch like like in twenty nineteen after like econ. I'm like seeing everybody else like sort of like uh, sort of step away from sampling a little bit or, you know, trying other things. And I thought I thought this is my time to shine. This is it. And then course i released it you know the week that we get lockdowns um and you know it's not a it's not a bright album mm -mm. so timing is oh, not yeah. good um as well as is it is it not like my other stuff not really is it minimal yes is it intentionally a bit simplistic yes um i like it and some people like it, but I've I still like got it. I like it a lot when it came back out personally. There. You know, so I mean, it's it's one of those things where I got I got I got really excited and hyped up about putting that out, and ooh, crash Damn. and burn. So I mean, I, I I've learned just not to expect a whole lot. Um, it's nice when things blow up or go go my way, but you know. Um, at this point, I just sort of I, I put out what I make, 
And if it resonates with somebody, that's great. If it doesn't, I I I made it just to put it out, you know. <laughs> right. Were you expecting Holy Ghost to get as big as it has? Uh, I mean, I didn't expect Vaporwave to get as big as it, it did. Yeah, that's I a mean, good like, answer. This was what 2013 I released uh, Fraser Wave, and seven years later, um, and like. I mean, I had already started, like, a label before Business Casual. And, you know, that was seen next to no response. It was basically just within, like, a sub, sub, sub group that it was seeing, mm -hmm. like, a response. And it was maybe, like, you know, maybe a dozen, two dozen people. Uh, so once I, I tried doing the Vaporwave thing, and I... And I made my own label there because I'm seeing growth here. And also, I mean, like, it's it's similar to what I was making before. I was making, like, this sort of chopped up, glitchy, plunderphonic stuff, you know, and it's like that early stuff, like the slow dance stuff was very similar to that. Um, so when I made Business Casual, and that did like, better in the first week that, than pretty much anything had done in, like, two years. So I was like, okay, well, let's, let's see where this goes. And so, uh, right. Uh, I I guess I never really expected anything there was going to be huge, but uh, I mean I'm pleasantly surprised, you know. Um, I mean Holy Ghost is you know it's it's a slow down loop of you know a Dion sample. Love love the guy. Love that album. Uh, love I, I just I just everything he puts out it's just so good. It really is. Is that is that the one? Because I feel like he did. Well, that's LP, right? It's not the split with Grimes. That that one is from the split with Grimes. There it's is from the split with version. Grimes. There is another version that is on LP, but LP. I mean, it's, it's like a it's like a it's in my top ten of like la the last decade. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, dude, it's a fucking it's phenomenal really good. album. Holy shit! Like, woo! If y'all haven't listened to LP by Dayon or Dion, you gotta. Really, really phenomenal. Uh, early 2010s, just like can't even really classify it. Um, and the guy's voice is just like uncannily similar to like you know Peter Gabriel or yeah, yeah. No, it's just like I mean I grew up with Genesis, so I mean hearing that voice is just like oh man. And things like it, it, it does kind of bum me out that he doesn't really do a lot of singing anymore. Which no, I mean, he does the, like, piano, and that's kind of all he does oh, now. He's, like, broke, you know, sort of stuff. I mean, like... He's incredibly good. Yeah, I... I it'd be... I think it'd be interesting to see if if he was to start singing again, because, honestly, mm -hmm. his voice is just so, like, it's... I don't know, it's, it's candy for my ears. He yeah. did that set. You might have been there. Uh, it was an online live stream. I think it was an SPF 420... I feel like, and he did a bunch of the piano stuff, and then he ended with Alkiyama, and I don't think mm. he sang on it, but I was just, oh man, when Alkiyama came on, I was like, <laughs> ascending. Yeah, I, I don't, I think my first SBF show was probably the, the, it may have, it may have been the St. Pepsi release party, may have been, oh, but I think, cool. there, I, I, think, I think there was one before that that I went to, and that's how I found out about the same person release party, the Hip Vibes one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, hard. You that's after, that? after that's the crowdfunding badass. thing. I, I, I mean, I... Because who, who else was playing that? It was like Bowen... Uh, oh, man. I think, Throwback. Uh, Mark, I think uh, Spaz Kid played that Mark as Redito, well. yeah. Mark, Mark Redito played yep, it as yep, well. Yep. It was Spaz Kid at the time. He played that one as well. Yeah, Bowen but, definitely played also. Yeah, I... Remember that. I I think it's like I I feel like I may have been to an earlier one, but I don't remember uh, what it was because I mean like that because Hip Vibes came out what in like May or like twenty thirteen twenty thirteen oh, and Miss Kaz had had started in like May of twenty thirteen and I had really gotten to Vaporwave in like April so I mean there wasn't a huge turnaround time from like you know when I started the label or when I like thought of starting the label. You know, getting into vape wave and getting into this sort of stuff, and then where I ended up, you know. Um, but yeah. So, uh, so, so, what are you doing, at, uh, Chris? You're at a hotel Me? right now. Oh, what are you doing uh, in the I, hotel? You I, got, I, you I just, just kicked out. Hold it! Shut up again. I was. 
Yeah, you, you're allowed to ask us questions too while the uh, chat runs up those questions for Christ. Me, uh, I've got a, I, 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 you know, I, I think I sent you an early version of my album a long time ago. I've reworked it a lot. I have a uh, Fire Tools that's like mastered it for me and everything now, and I got some really cool album artwork for it. It's gonna come out on uh, Hush Tones, and uh, in October. And I'm working on a live version of it too right now, where I'll be playing bass and such like that. So it's very cool. It was a wow. tough album. Wow. It's very personal stuff, but uh, that's done. Now that that album's done, I've got a bunch of other stuff I'm going to start working on um, in that vein of that kind of music. And uh, I'm hoping actually just to start visiting people again. I want to go visit. I was just talking about visiting Portland and then uh, also visiting Isaac. And I definitely I get back to Pittsburgh again. Honestly, bro, like, hey, like I, we could like, meet we, in we Pittsburgh. That's like our halfway point. We could all meet there. We could get up early and go. Oh, do the. Pittsburgh was all had a great time last year. Yeah, do the flea market thing. Yeah, we haven't been yet, and I really want to go. Yeah, I, I, this, this past week, you know, it was like raining on Sunday, and so I went on Saturday, and like there was nobody there, but I found uh, a stack of like Sega CD manuals, and I got the whole stack, like ten of them for ten bucks. And in there was a Snatcher manual. If you guys know uh, Kojima, right? You know, uh, okay. uh, Metal Gear. Yeah. Uh, one of his early games, Snatcher. Picked up that manual and I flipped it on eBay. Four hours later, it sold for 400 bucks. Whoa! Holy shit! That's amazing! Yeah. And it wasn't like a guide. It was just like the little manual from the game. It, it, I mean, Sega CD's got the tall manuals. but, but That's right. You're right. I'm sorry. But... But basically, that's all it was because the guy, you know, the the game goes for like fifteen hundred complete. So Jesus, you know, uh, I mean that was, a, that, was a, that was I mean I love going to the flea market. It's free money. Yeah, dude. Baby. It's whenever you post, you're like, oh, I had a great day today. I got all this for fifty bucks, and I'm just like, <laughs> like. And I remember chatting with you about like I think you found a bunch of DS games or something, or like a old like a a specific like it was like a Legend of Zelda or like a Mario DS. And like just oh, yeah. really, really just made out like a bandit. I, 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 you know what? I, it's not every week that I do amazing, but some weeks like I picked up that pair of uh, like old like Oakleys, and I haven't sold them yet. I kind of don't want to sell them, but I also don't look amazing in them. They're like these like bug eye looking <laughs> like sunglasses, right? You know, yeah. like very Y two K, and uh, they go for like a grand, two grand. You know, dude, you're I'm, shitting like, me. Unreal. That's crazy. Wow. I, I just. Well, this is really fun. I mean, it's just a fun thing to do. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's just interesting. Well, you know, it's just like, it's a very interesting thing to just dig through the past in like a very physical sense of doing that. You know what I mean? Because we do that in our minds all the time, particularly in the art form that we operate in. We're digging through our minds in, in the past. So to actually just do that in reality too. Well, it's just a nice little counterpoint to what we're just doing all the time anyway. You know, to actually I mean... physically do it and then to mentally do it in the other times. I, you know, some of my favorite things to find there is this couple guys who just bring pallets of loose discs. And so I'll okay. just, I'll sort through, the, I'll get like a hundred discs for 10 bucks, you know, and I'll just mm. rip into the computer and I'll go through that mm-hmm. for samples, you know. Um, I currently have, pro- I, I, I probably got like 300 CDs I still need to burn. That's I, wild. I, That's amazing. Or, or, or I mean, I just, see that my, that my, Favorite one of my favorite things uh, is I, I, I do one of my favorite things about, about you in general is the arc is is your your role as an archivist. I think it's, it's such an extremely important thing because I like agree. you have to like you have to like I, I I don't I try to archive like anything that I've ever found I try to keep on uh, external drives as well anything I've ever done or anything that my friends have done I try to do that as well because like I understand I mean, that I'm surrounded by drives. If people I can't even imagine what you've got I don't even know I probably hundreds and hundreds but like the thing that happens. AC or AV, remember Andrew? He was on the show before. Oh yeah, yeah, Vimanas. Had these like, cause he does this too. He like, he like fanatically like. He says he's like, well, you have to do this because this is how you tell the story of what happened. And if you don't tell the story of what happened, somebody else will, and they're gonna. It's not gonna be what really happened. It's gonna be their 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 version. So you gotta like document. You know what I mean? And things can be yeah. t- you and you. I quote one time several years ago where you're like. I don't know if it was on Hot Takes or it was on some other show where, like, you the internet can go away. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't save it, if you don't back it up, like, there's no guarantee that you'll still have access to it. So you've got yeah, to I, do the archive. I mean, we, we're in a very, we're in a very weird time 
because I feel like a lot of the like a lot of the early early stuff is already gone. You know, dude. Yeah, all and the data we, rod is unreal. And like I links. mean, you can really live on. Sorry, but you you you, you were saying weird time. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna interrupt. I, I want to hear what you have to say. I, I, I want to hear what you have to say. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's just just honestly, yeah, the internet could, <laughs> could go down tomorrow, and every, every, like everybody's got their photos in the cloud. You know, everybody's got their like, you know. Uh, iCloud. Say, you know, one of their servers goes down, and it just has to be the one with all your photos on it. They're gone. Unless you back them up. You know? Like, I I, I mean, it, it's a little bit... It, it's one of those things that feels too big to fail, but... Well said. It, it will... It probably will fail at some point. And there are some things you kind of want to have. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. my, my hard drive in my computer, I have like two drives in here, like my regular drive and my, my archive drive. Um, and my archive drive in here died. Um, so thankfully I had backed up most of it and I was able to get in there and back up some stuff. But, uh, unfortunately I lost probably about eight or nine months worth of my music folder. Ooh. Cause I, I, I had Not backed cool. up, you know acted up last in like September of last year. Uh, and so I lost basically, you know, I think it's like, it's really, I, I, I'm trying to work on a mix right now for uh, one of these live shows coming up and I'm, I'm Too having cool. a hard time remember what, what I had downloaded to, to use because I would just, mm. I'm so used to just going through my library, picking out things and, you know, throw them in the, the thing and playing around with them. But uh, now that I don't have basically what I was been listening to, and had downloaded for the past, you know, couple months. It's been a lot more discouraging. So I, save your stuff, back your stuff up, yep. and back it up often. Because honestly, you know, you, you don't think about it until it's gone. Yeah, I mean, I've had hard drives that have died. I've like I've lost a lot of the early original like Ableton files for like the first Skeleton Lipstick music I made. Like that's like I can't react. I don't know how to react to that. That's why. I, so, um, but yeah, I think that we live under, like, we, we do live under this sort of, like, um, this false, like, sense of security where, like, everything's available, but it's really not. It's it's an illusion. You know, it, it's literally an illusion. It's not real. Yeah. And you have to actually save it. Or or be okay with losing it and make sure it's not too, too in nature. I hope it's not too part, much a part of your identity if it gets lost. It's I mean, I think shit. it's like, it, if I lost a lot of this stuff, I think I'd be fine. It's just... Yeah. Honestly, it's, it's, it would take a lot of the, because it, it takes a long time to archive and back up and save all this stuff to begin with. Yeah. So when you lose it all, it, it it's like, you know, selling your, I sold my entire video game collection or like 90% of my video game collection Whoa. last year. And it felt so good afterwards because honestly, you know, I, I had this like huge, like these shelves full of stuff I just wasn't doing anything with. And once those shelves were gone, wow, it just feels so much op more open in here. You know, or like it, it's sort of like a, it's like if you lose everything in a fire, you know, there is this sadness that you lost everything, but as long as you have insurance, it might you be can, freeing you, a you, little you, bit too. You, you, you might be, it might be, have that sort of like, you know, freeing feeling. You know, oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, it's still really terrifying to think about, though. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I've, I've vacillated my entire existence between like minimalism and opulence, and like I have gone through phases where I have lived in the cheapest, shittiest, smallest apartment possible and owned the least amount of things as possible. Like, I mean, a few years ago, I was just living in this the worst, tiniest studio apartment. I had a bed, I had a computer, I had my synthesizers, and I'd gotten rid of almost everything else aside from some clothes. And like, it was to the point where people would come over and they didn't believe what I did for a living. But in my head, I was like, I don't need this stuff. I can live like this. This is the absolute minimum that I need. And and you know what? I, I don't have a shitty apartment, but it's in a good area. It's And guess what? It's cheap. And now I can put money towards my student loans and like all these other things. And I did that for a few years. And then at some point I was like, okay, let's try something else. And now I just bought this house that's really big. And I've been like, kind of like, I've, I've like decided, I'm like, I'm gonna buy some expensive things now. I'm gonna put expensive you things around treat yourself here. At Interesting some point. looking things. I've been doing that. 
one rule I've had for myself when I buy the things is like, I, if I'm gonna buy an object, like I need to be able to see it. Like it needs to be in a place, it needs to have a spot and I can't store it. If I store uh -huh. it, if, I, if I'm buying so much stuff, I mean, it's one thing for like That's albums point. or clothes or like hard drives, but if it's a thing, the thing has to go in a place and I should be able to see it in the room. I can't get so many things that I can't, if I can't display the thing, just like I should packed away things. in boxes. Or if or I get too many things, then I have to get, if I get so many things, I have to start putting things into storage and then I must get rid of something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's I the like that. rule I've set up for myself with the house. And it's cool to have a house now because now I have a room where I have the synthesizers are gonna be set up, that'll be the studio. And I've gotten into photography recently, like film photography. So now I've set up another room as like a studio where I'm like buying backdrops. And now all those interesting objects I'm buying, I can photograph them, you know what I mean? And that's what I've been doing. And it's, you know, so I've got, now I'm in that phase. I don't know how long I'm gonna be in that phase for. At some point I might be like, I think I'm done with this and I will choose to lose everything and get rid of it. And maybe I'll just, maybe I just won't have a that's house. That's really healthy. Bit. Or I'll rent this place out, maybe. I probably won't get rid of the house. I'll rent it, you know what I mean? And well, I, 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 I mean, you know, when, when did you buy the house? Did you just get lucky a year ago. with the timing? No, I, 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 no. I didn't buy it at a great I bought it a year ago. It wasn't, okay. it, it wasn't the best, like, but I, I, oh, I'm older. Shout out, Frank. Thank not, you for the donation. The thing, I'm, I'm older than, I'm older than you guys. And at some point, like, if I was, if I'm going to buy a house, I'm going to, I, I got to do it now. And like, yeah. I have the money, you know what I mean? And the thing is that like, I, I will buy the house and I can use it for interesting things. Like it's the house is a lot for like fun projects for me to occupy myself with. And, um, you know, um, this is the decade I'll do that during, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky you. I mean, I don't honestly, well, you can do it too. All you gotta do is be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Real shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, you have, well, all you gotta do is, is just sacrifice all your twenties. Yeah. Yeah. My one buddy, uh, you know, is a pharmacist. He see, he's, you know, he sacrificed most of his twenties to, you know, school alone. Hundreds of thousands so. of dollars in debt, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here. Oh yeah. But no, whatever. I'll, I don't care. Fuck it. You, yeah, you're an enigma, man. Oh, thank you. Guys, Frank just uh, do Martin, generously sir. donated and said <laughs> he wants Skelly to book him to DJ in his city for me to book him to DJ in my city and to tell John he looks very handsome. Oh, hi. Hi, Frank. Oh, what a guy. Uh, oh, that's Frank? Hi, Frank. Yeah, love that Frank guy. Over here. Absolutely. I love Frank. Always me too, man. Always, always uh, enjoy talking to Frank. I wish I had I, a fraction so of his you're, energy. You're not in a hotel right now? I am in a hotel right now. Okay, I was, I, I was thinking, I, like, I'm in pointing Detroit, over, I'm in Detroit pointing right over there. Like, Okay, I'm uh, like... because I work for well, so I I work I'm a private contractor, and so there are various pro, pro, yeah, various practices that hire me to do work for them, um, and so one of them's in Detroit, and they find me I, I go here once a uh, one 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 week a month. Mm -hmm. Right, I, 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 I just I'm just thinking like that that's a swanky. It's not what you would expect from a from a skeletal lipstick you know right. uh, bedroom. Oh, oh, yeah. Not enough no, black very, blackness like, and yeah, skeletons of naked women. Yeah. No, no, no. My my actual bedroom is like ensconced in like red velvet and like ensconced. has like <laughs> it's, it's ensconced in red velvet. It's got like a, a one of those like big like bed post things and this. It's all like red. <laughs> His nightstand and, like, is like um, a, a giant have, like skeleton um, hand. I've got like a big velvet a red chair in there. I have a. He doesn't um, wash in a sink. Big, it's like a neon a, sign that says "Let's get bold. weird." I've got like another like neon sign with like a naked girl hanging over a crescent moon. Uh, do you I, oh, have and do you have mirrors on a really fun like a post like a little like beautiful post i have i found this at a flea market it is a signed copy is a cop is a picture of oj simpson and johnny cochran signed by both of them wow you found that at a flea market <laughs> quite an eclectic christ you might have well, some I'm not competition gonna buy that. are you kidding me that's crazy i okay we got okay. some questions in the chat we got to catch up with gentlemen Hydroplane into a false well, reality. I find it to be just a strange, funny thing. To would keep like to know if you have some good advice like for label really, curation. Really Christ. Uh, I mean, does it sound good? That's that's like the big thing. I mean, I you think it's like there uh, lately. It's it's kind of a a a. a in between of whether it sounds good or whether it sounds interesting you hope it's both yeah but sometimes you know you only get one or the other and things that maybe sound good that are really boring 
don't get through. If it sounds good, it's a little bit interesting. That's good. If it's right interesting, but sounds really bad. <laughs> but if it's interesting, and it sounds good enough. That's that's good. And, and again, you hope it's both of them. But uh, sometimes yeah. you know you you get what you get. Um, it's a great place I mean, to start. I, I I think it's just you know like what you put out you know if you if you if you really don't like you know uh, now even if it's like by you know a big big artist you know saint pepsi hits you up and he's got you know fart sounds you know <laughs> reverb or shit like you know that maybe Actually don't does do saint that pizza. Uh, yeah. Saint, yeah 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 put, maybe don't put that one out maybe <laughs> you know pa- like like sure you could probably get the sales but like at the same time i this is something I brought up to to uh, uh, Fiber when he was doing Montem. You know, think about your legacy. Think about That's what you want to leave behind. You know, once the label is once the label is eventually over, it's out once of your hands. Once the internet hands. fails, what, once the internet goes offline, you know, what do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known for you know someone who just represses? the big elms that were already, you know, tried and true by other labels that it took the risk on them at the time? Or do you want to be the one to bring up those new artists who, you know, are just starting out, bring up those, you know, elms that have no listeners right now, but do have the quality, just are missing something up yeah. to them. You know, that's, to me, that's what's important is, you know, giving a voice to artists who don't always you know, have the best, you know, luck when it comes to, you know, their own social media. Cause, cause I mean, honestly, that's, that's the other thing, you know, um, social media is kind of important these days, you know, yeah. and it's, it's getting harder to take those chances on like brand new artists who have like no following, you know, like, it's it's definitely getting tricky out there for for us labels i mean i I, i'm not sure if i'm alone here but uh i mean tape sales they're not amazing cd sales they've been they were a couple years ago but still not amazing i don't do a whole lot of vinyl because it's so expensive and takes forever huge risk you know um so honestly um you know, if you're running a digital label, you know, keep your, your overhead low, you know, mm. sell your discography for a couple bucks, you know, get a couple bucks in, yeah, you know, get those smart. free downloads on Bandcamp, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I, as long as, as long as you are, you know, putting stuff that you like out and you're empowering artists that you care about, you know, or the, the music that you like or whatever, that's i think all that's important you know yeah. um but uh but yeah just 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 think about the long term like what do you what what are you going to be embarrassed about you know <laughs> 20 years from now cuz the thing is i like, sure sure we say the internet can go off tomorrow but also the internet is forever so anything you right. put online you know i mean the duality could of man. be yeah it could be forever so be be you know don't be cautious, but just be aware of, you know, what you put again. And, you know, I've put out my fair share of albums by people who turned out to not be so amazing over the years. I, I remember at I2K, you I know, said, all right, what are the stories behind all these discontinued albums? Oh, yeah. well, I mean, that I mean, might I mean, be too I hot mean, for I mean, hot takes, but I was like, I mean, there's, there's one or two that like, I've had situations where, like, you know, somebody turned out not to be a great person, but other situations are like, I just had a discontinued album today. Because uh, some somebody, uh, uh, an artist that was sampled, had found out about it and uh, made a comment on Facebook about it, and I, I, they they hadn't done anything about it, but I wasn't risking anything, so I'm just like Yikes. I took it down, so yeah. I just yanked it from. But like sometimes it's something like that, or like there's there's one out where I honestly. I gave this artist all the chances in the world. I, I sent them a t- like I sent them merch. I like you know they wanted they wanted all these things and they still weren't happy and they were just I 
like there's there's a couple artists who i've just outright you know as soon as the tape sold out or whatever or as soon as like you know a certain time period was over i just you know cut them off i just like just do them i don't want to deal with you ever again you know yikes yeah. just divas. cash out wow. you know yeah. just 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 I mean, I, I, so sometimes it's divas sometimes honestly it's a language barrier and it's also like like a, a thought of like you know expectations are higher than maybe they should expect from a, a vaporwave label or, yeah or in, fair or an online yeah. music label. i'm not i'm not you know warp i'm not uh you know epic records or whatever whatever the big record labels are i i, I don't know i'm one guy shipping all this shit out of my apartment you know <laughs> right so you know i i don't know some people do expect more than i can give and i tried i try to be upfront with artists who do expect a lot and sometimes you know it doesn't work out you know and they don't release or like they don't come back for another release but they have other artists mm -hmm. who i'm always releasing stuff from that because i'm easy to work with you send me your album i'll get you the th i think it's like I, I basically do everything you know um Very i do cool. the design stuff the layout stuff for the tapes i ship everything out i i i'm like a one-stop shop if you just want somebody to distribute your album you don't really care a whole lot about like you know because, I mean, tapes are expensive, you know. It, it, we yeah, say vinyl is expensive, but tapes are expensive. CDs are expensive. And when you're still charging 10 bucks for a tape or CD, you know, um, it's not a whole lot of money there. There's enough yeah. money there to make a little bit of some, but you're, you're probably better off just taking your money from Spotify or streaming or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and that's where you get your, your, the real bucks. And if you want like some physical stuff for, that your fans could have, that's where I come in, you know? Hell yeah. Um, the legacy. Yeah. Part. I think you set up the culture of business casual pretty clear for people. And I think that people want to work with you because of your curation. And they know, I mean, in my opinion, if you get a cosign from John, then you're doing something right. I agree. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, right I appreciate you putting out my polymath album, so thank you. Yeah, I did they sell it? I think they sold it. Uh, there's probably like three copies left. But yeah. it's a cool album. Yeah, I think it's a cool album. People will yeah, figure it out. Check it out. I mean, Get... it, it, the, the, what, the song, the, the Donorland song is on the Vaporwave uh, Spotify playlist. You know? Right, true. Yeah, that got on the Spotify yep. playlist, so. Uh, but it's a thinker, you know. But I figure yeah, if you like sober, drone or ambient you know, music or just like approval, synth noodling, you should definitely check thing, it out. You know what I mean, um, but that's why I think people want to work with you. But I can totally see that there are people who are younger, who are inexperienced, who don't really understand how independent music works, and they expect well, too much. I, or they have like an idea I, in their I, mind. I, that you're gonna make me a star, like I. Yeah, right. I think they, they. It's because here's the thing: the the vape wave scene works differently than I think the regular indie music scene. Like, let's be real here: we're all we're all sampling stuff. We're all like, no one's clearing samples. No one's doing any of this sort of like the the actual stuff you need to do. We're all just having fun here. We're releasing, you know, yes. albums. We're releasing stuff, you know. We're having fun. I, I, we're, we're making all art. Low you know I mean? All low stakes. All low stakes. You know, you're not gonna. You know, uh, there are only a handful of artists that have really popped off from this scene like outside of like you know like you got mm -hmm. like you got saint pepsi you got uh uh uh, uh what's young bay young bay uh uh Matt Ross, i guess i mean but but even really i i don't know like those are the two names that i, I can think of what i think of people who have like branched out further than the scene and actually have what you might consider a career yeah art graph yeah you know like actual career in the music industry i are is are we really part of the music industry or are we just you know, i never thought so <laughs> right i never really thought exactly so, so. Just, you know, our own cottage industry that's why that's why I, that's why i wanted to be a part of it though was because yeah. it wasn't I, because i was i was always more interested in making art than i was in in anything else and i look it, it, here's the thing as an artist there's like i always i don't know if this is right or wrong but i there are like three types of artists that you have to, that the world must contend with. There's lots of artists, but if you want to, there's three types. And if you like really push hard to these three types of archetypes, that's like the world must contend with you. And it's, you can only really be one of these three if you're going to really try and go hard in your career. And I could be wrong, but I'll just give you my theory. So the first type of artist that you can be is you can be the biggest artist. 
The biggest artist is the one who is going to try and get the most airplay, be in the most areas, you know, make the most people happy, you know, make compromises maybe to make them so, you know, you're, you're not, you're, you're, you're going to be the biggest. Everybody's going to know your name. You're going to be out there. You're going to have a reputation for being the biggest, like the Will Smith of like artists, basically. The Will Smith of musicians, right? Like you're going to be out there. You're going to do it. You know, no one's going to call you like you're, they'll, people will respect you and they'll think you're talented, but you're going to be the biggest and people can tell that's your priority. It's like what you said about giving people advice, making labels. Like when you make your label, you could you could be a bigger label by just repressing stuff that people know, but you're going to lose a sense of identity. So that's one. Then the other type of artist that you can be is you can be the best. Now the best is the one who's like the best at at the most technically best. They do the they are the they are, they understand their instruments the best. They are like the they most are able to write the proficient. best, most impressive sounding work, the most impressive sounding songs, the most impressive work, and people respect the hell out of them because they are the best at making things, at making the at making it on a technical level. The, the third type of artist, which is the one that I feel like is the best one to strive to be, is the artist who is most themselves. So they are most concerned with them being the most themselves through their music. And that doesn't mean that they are the greatest at making it. It doesn't mean that they're the best at it, but people know who they are and they respect them because like that person is creating an identity through their art. You know, like that's a, yeah. that I can feel the presence of the artist in that work more than I can, even in the guy who's the best at making stuff. And even in the guy who's the biggest at making stuff, there's that per that the artist like who wants to just be the most themselves through the work they make. And that's like the one that I think is the, that's what I try to do. And like, I'm not trying to push to, I'm not gonna be big. I don't care about being big, but that's what I try to do when I make stuff. I don't really care if it's the best. I don't really care if it's big. I just want it to be me. So I feel like okay. the ones who are the best at doing one of those three types of artists are like the ones that the world must contend with. I, I feel I feel like there's very few people that could be all three, but I know, I know people- all three, because if you want to be really mm. big, like really no, well known, you have to pick one route and push, push hard. You can be all three. Well, I, but okay, you'll, like you're, like you're, you're Radiohead, you're Apex Twin. You have you to know? make some concessions. But people can be famous for being the biggest. They can be famous for being the best. They can be famous for being the most themselves. Mm -hmm. But you got, you cannot do all three if you're going to be really famous. You have to kind of go one route and push hard into it. I, 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 I guess, you know, I don't know, man. It's just a theory. It's a theory it, I've been it's playing. Not a, it's it's been playing not a bad theory. theory. It's, it's not, you know, and it's, 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 an, it's provocative theory, though, right? It's provocative, you know? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, we got, that's pretty, we got a couple of like backlogged this. questions I want to just really quick get through before we got to finish the show tonight. We got a guy that wants to know, we'll just go in reverse order. Um, Nikora Online, are we ever getting a No Lives Matter CD release? And do you have anything planned f with uh, the Father 2006 project? Uh, Eventually for the CD release, eventually. It's my hope to get everything out on like CD so you can like, you know, have them all like on the little shelf, you know. Yep. Um, but I, I, it's not, it's not next in the queue. There's a couple I other things coming up, but uh, uh, and f I, you know, in the back of my head, you know, it's funny. Just today, I, I found out that uh, somebody on Spotify had tagged me in a song, like basically they had released a song and added me as a featured artist on it. Oh, and don't I'm you like, love that? I well, I messaged the guy. Thankfully, they're able to take it down, or, or they're they're going to take it down. That's what they say. So I mean, but like, I when I have something that I feel like, you know, when I have something worth putting out, I will I will have some, whether or not that's you know this year or ten years from now. If I if I ever have something, I'll put it out. You know, but at the moment. There's nothing in nothing deep in the works. There's things I'm playing around with, but nothing is, you know, in stone. I mean, it's those those first two albums were flukes. I feel like I, I made right. it in like a week. Both of them I made in like a week, you oh, know. Wow. And and it the, the third one took like you know, it's like half the length and took like you know, a, a year to make. You know, so I mean, honestly, I don't know how long it's going to be till the next one. So. Good to know. Afternoon Walk would like to know. They say they want you to know that they miss those Sunday Twitch streams you used to do. Do you oh, see yeah, yourself? I miss the Sunday streams as well. Yeah, those they, they want to know if you see yourself making weekly streams like again. You know, I, there's a part of me that would love to get back to doing that, but honestly, it's a lot of work. And yeah. honestly, it's just 
I am no disco holic. I am no. He's you know, fucking I, insane, I, dude. He's well, this... he's. I, he, here's the thing. I if I if I didn't have to rely on having like a co-host or didn't have to rely on having you know other people there. I mean, I'm I I, I maybe I just thought I'm ill practiced for you know that sort of stuff. But I am I'm not interesting to talk. Like I'm not. I I can't find something to talk to by myself. For like an hour, two I'm hours, three way. hours a weekend, you know. I gotta so, have to have a skelly that just like kind of just yammers. It, it it's it's nice being able to jump off people and you know have fun and you know, um, because yeah, I I talk to myself sometimes, but uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> usually not very interesting, you know. Well, you know, I I think you'd be surprised, but but I know I feel that on a spiritual level, buddy. It, it's not something I would completely right off but it's not something i'm itching to do at the moment i've right. got other things on my plate it gets kind of stressful i mean I, I mean honestly yeah and, and also you know if you especially if you have like you, you have like a almost like biz cast like i have to make sure on friday i'm up i gotta make sure i'm up and yeah I've yeah make, oh yeah I, and you have those listening camp. parties now well i mean listening parties too like i i'm out today i'm on the bus i have like 10 percent left on my phone and i'm trying to schedule this this tweet for the you know, uh, uh, listening party because Bandcamp still doesn't have the ability to schedule a release oh, and just asinine. have it go live. I I cannot believe that it's it still doesn't have that. It's yep. it's it's honestly one of the most annoying things about using Bandcamp because I can schedule Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, mm. Facebook. I can schedule everything else, but I can't schedule Bandcamp, and I'm like. Guess I gotta make sure. I I got two hours of sleep last night. I gotta make sure I'm up by Bruh. noon. Yeah, unreal. Shout out to you, dude. Man, yeah, uh, we got a dude. couple other questions. We're just gonna not gonna have time to get to. Man, I'm sorry, you guys, well, what but do you, um, well, what do you what do you what do you what do you gotta get the dinner? It's yeah. like ten o'clock, dude. Gotta go to sleep. I gotta go to the doctor tomorrow. What time? Ten fifteen. Got to be there fifteen yeah. minutes early. Okay. Hey, man, you know how to get up early. Don't hate. Um, what do you want I, to... You know, you know, we should do, like, more, like, these, like, uh, I think we should do some more hot takes, like, specials, where we have, like, eight people on. Extended we do, like, edition. Round thing. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun as fuck. I agree. And then, like, you know, everybody, everyone who wants to come in can come in, we can get our buddies, like, John and Lenny, and just have little chats, because I was just, I said the Lenny episode, like, I enjoy these ones, because most of the time, when I have to do the hot takes, like, I gotta put myself into serious mode. And mm -hmm. I have to start looking into the person's soul and like asking them, like pulling out like where, where, where this, where they come from, like that exactly. Yeah. But now I can just be an asshole who talks too much. You're not an asshole, well, I, but I, 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 think, I think I think we know each other it's enough okay. to to know that you don't have to get that deep, you know. Well, I know. Well, that's True. what I'm saying with these ones, with you guys, with people are my friend. But like when we have, a, oftentimes we have a new artist on that I've talked yeah. to a little bit. But obviously, like I want this is when I do a normal hot takes episode. It's their time to shine, and like yeah. I want to, I want them to be able to have something that they can look at where they put forward who they are, and that if they have it for their press kit. So now if they actually want to like send something to somebody to describe, like I've given them, we've given them a place to like talk about where they come from, where their motivations come from, what what they're about, because I know that anytime anyone's interviewed me, like that's been helpful because like I have like a thing I can refer to people, and so like that's a nice thing for the artists to have. And it's a little time. It's a thing that they everyone everyone loves. Everyone loves to have an interview. You know what I mean? Like on their like Facts. look background. But I don't have to. We don't have to interview here. Like that's what I was like excited. Like let's do an episode with like just two of our friends. So we'll bring them back. Yeah, we're just, we're just chilling. What is uh, yeah. what is something you would like to well, we promote have more or shout yeah. out? But I don't or want just... to ever get rid of the ones where I get to talk to people okay. and pull stuff. Oh, genius! What would we okay. say? genius idea I don't know, I was talking too much we gotta wrap up i hate it too man but what's something you want to leave your audience with you know i uh, i always used to joke back in the day that uh <laughs> alone online final are still available there's only gone, seven are they? left oh, oh man we're down congrats. to the last couple so that's it i mean i also i've also got the the new i don't have any right here but i've got the new album www if you haven't listened to it listen to it it's pretty good yes. i like cd 10 bucks noted christ club 15 oh, yeah, the christ. a year that's you know i mean oh, you'd be lucky cheap. to join some of the like what was george clanton's cover 15 bucks a month 
please. This is this not this this oh, this 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 but like you know, it is. It, we, we want to support Trump. Hey, hey, I, I live in Pittsburgh. It's a lot cheaper out. He lives in L.A., so of course it's going to be more expensive. But you know, uh, yeah, get, 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 get the flea market deals here. You know, oh yeah, fifteen bucks a year. You can't know, you can't flea market LA. deals. I don't, I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> no, that's but, great. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much I, for joining us tonight. This has been lovely. Um, y'all join that Christ Club. Fifteen dollars a year. Honestly, I'm I'm a convert. I need to sub to FM Skyline too. Damn. Well, yeah. Um, why don't you? Hey, why, why don't you just? Because I'm a the scrub, Christ, uh, dude. I, mean, I don't. Why you do? You don't have to do the Sunday streams. Why don't you just do? We could do the stream and people could talk again. It doesn't have to be so crazy organized. Yeah. I would hop on if you did a Sunday stream once in a while. Yeah, I probably would too. Okay. okay yeah. I'm, I'm not as interesting mind. as him, but you know. I'm not that interesting. I just talk. Like, I distract it, people. They it's think just I'm interesting. It's it's smoking just talking. That's that's all. It's just keep it conversation mm. going. That's yeah, all it absolutely. is. You know, we used to do that all the time back in the day where we would. Do yeah, the during the that's lockdown kind of era. Cool yeah. Why we can bring it back? I don't really do that much on Sundays anyway. Bax. Okay. Uh, Skelly, what do you got going on? What do you want to promote? Uh, Eclipse is September 7th, and in October, the new album comes out. Uh, it's uh, going to be called Death Romantique, with a Q-U-I-E. Ooh. That's the name of the album, Death Romantic. Um, very cool album cover that my buddy Rich shot the picture of. Uh, Rich is the guy who used to do the pictures for Terminally Chill, and he did the uh, cover. He did the album cover for it, and then it, the the uh, uh, the um, album was mastered by, of course, our dear friend Fire Tools. And the um, art direction, you know, the for the stuff that's gonna be death done by secret schools, and it'll be out on Hush Tones. You got a you powerhouse of artists working on that album. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. And then Eclipse cool. on September seventh. What's the name of that venue He's again? Milk Boy. Milk Boy. I remember it was kind of a funny name. Milk Boy. Fuck yeah. name. I wish I could play. I think it's, yeah, I don't know. It's a. It's got a. Sounds like a. Could be yeah. like a. A club yeah, I, for. Mm, yeah, like a, like a, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, or it's like like a like an Asian club, like Asian. No, um, I mean like a. No. Let me stop while I'm ahead. Anyways, um, no, no, keep going, Isaac. Let's see nope. what you got. I just meant like a club in Japan with like a weird translated name. That's all. You heard it on Hot Takes. Um, we got some cool stuff coming up. Uh, <laughs> Isaac get canceled. <laughs> Any percent. <laughs> um, we got some cool things well, coming you, up. You, uh, for, wow. <laughs> <clears throat> some <laughs> some live stream events coming up. Uh, the Vapor Loot one got announced. I believe that's September 6th and 7. Let me grab that information, actually, so I'm not just guessing. Uh, but yeah, Vapor Loot's coming up here pretty soon. They've got a really cool uh, event. Um, that um, I, What's the guy's name? Uh, I think it's uh, Lost Colossus. I don't remember anything. But anyways, so that festival's coming up. Thank you, Lux. God bless you. Um, so Vapor Loot's ca happening. Great lineup of people. A lot of Signal Wave people. A lot of people that are really active in the uh, like Hot Take server are going to be participating. And the guy's got a really awesome aesthetic of like, like you know the like the the PS One visuals that they make. It looks like like really low res, kind of polygonal. Uh, that's that's coming up here pretty soon. Um, gosh, I really was hoping I would find it on my phone and I. Yeah, I'll promote better next time. But anyways, got an ambient music set that I put together for that. I've never done an ambient DJ set before. Yeah, that's awesome. But I got awesome. ripped as fuck, and poor Lux had to hear it over and over and over. A lot of Dream Catalog stuff. A lot of Tim Hecker. Um, nice. A lot of physics. You remember Physics Lab, John? Physics with the, the I two. Feel like like, I, I feel like I recognize that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of just like great ambient, like Dream Punk and just drone and that kind of stuff. Um and then, of course, uh, some unannounced live stream events that uh, they can't talk about because they're not announced yet. But I got a uh, a pretty cool, like, chill wave DJ set with some Brother Tiger, some George Clanton, uh, a really awesome Late Arcane track. That's coming up here. Uh, just Late hasn't Arcane. been announced yet. I love Late Late Arcane. Arcane. Shout out Late Arcane. Late Arcane. Um, yeah, I played in just listen to their... I did a set from one of their live album releases. Um, they were here in the chat earlier, too. Yeah, they were. I was. I just just bought an album by them. Just the other day. It's the one that says redacted. I think they're great. It's like the ones right before Bizcaz. Yeah, I I put out uh two of them now. So I put out uh yeah, they're stupid good. Extravagance and I I can see that I have I still got I still got a couple a couple tape copies of it. Uh, what is it? Uh, Don Ken. 
Th- non canon. I love non canon. It's, Do I have yeah. it's good know. stuff. They I can't. Really Leonard King is great. We got we to bring him on the show. We need really to get British right. people on the show. I want you guys to listen to, to Late Arcane and then also to um, uh, another band that actually, John, you've also put out works by them too. Uh, Star, uh, fuck, what's it called? Hold on. I feel so validated right now. I can't remember anything. Uh, Glad I'm not the only one. No, no. <laughs> uh, Star, uh, was this recently or? No, hold on. I'll find Strawberry it. Strawberry Station? No, not Str- well. Love Strawberry Station as well, of course. Ah, fuck. Uh, shit, this is really bad because I, I really like them a lot. Was it an too. album called um, "Wake Me When the Stars Go Out"? No. Okay, Lux found that. Hold on. Ah, fuck. Oh wow, that's so. I keep I keep wanting to call it Soulcraft, Starcraft, Soulcraft. Oh, Soulcraft. Soulcraft. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. With the like triangle. I keep wanting to call. I kept wanting to say Starcraft, obviously, but no, Soulcraft. Um. I the I love Late Arcane and Soul Soulcraft. Um and you put out a really good Soulcraft album, I remember. Um I mean, has, he, has called... he put out anything bad? Let's be real here. Never, <laughs> never. That guy's a genius. I think he's super underrated. I think his stuff is really, really hits me pretty hard and like I think there's a lot of emotion behind it. And uh I that that guy's I I, I like I don't I like that guy a lot. Uh and I love, I love his music. The Soulcraft and like Late Arcane are two of my favorite artists from the scene. I like them I was both say Stolecraft. I believe I learned that from you. Oh, We've also got uh, Vapor Rays coming up in uh, September, September 21st at 1 p.m. I did my research. So go to Vapor Rays. Uh, Utopia District presents. Shout out. All uh, donations, I believe, are going to go to uh, to funding ALS research and, and awareness. And I've got a uh, like a neo R&B DJ set for that, featuring like a lot of early 2010s kind of R&B-esque like, artists like... Um, Active child, how to dress well, you know, got the uh, the. You remember when um when Vectroid did that that magic? They flipped that magic fade song. I've got that in there. Anyways, um, so that's what's going on with me. Uh, and also, if you are throwing a live IRL show, you should book your boy. You won't regret it. I'll uh, I'll go harder than you ever thought. And I'm I'm getting an inhaler tomorrow, so I'll go even harder. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out. This has been a lot of fun, John. You're delightful always. And, and yes. so was Lemmy. I'm going to put one more link in the chat. Yeah, please do. Join the Christ. There's the Actually, Discord. You, you may want to not join the Christ Discord, but join the Christ Discord. I'm probably going to fucking join. I should. I don't know why. Actually, um, I, I, not, I don't participate in any Discord. I'll yeah, join yeah, this one. It, it, well, it's called Christ Dude, you Hell. Popped in so, one you know. Christ Hell? Yeah, I got to join it. I mean, that, that's um, what it's called. So, I mean, uh, be, be ready for uh, the worst. It's it's unregulated. <laughs> Um, trying to figure out if we need to raid anybody tonight. So while I check and see if anyone is live, I'll just say, um, don't forget guys to join us in two weeks. Um, and then of course I'm going to, you know, run through all the, the links, but, uh, we are going to go back to our, though this was a lot of fun, go to go back to our regular format. Um, on September 2nd at 8 PM, we're going to be bringing on strip silence. Long time, long time friend, long time fan, uh, valued mod and uh in front of the show strip silence is a kind of an upper comer if you don't know him you got to get to know him uh he's a mover he's a shaker he's very skilled and he's got a, a strong background in hip-hop and uh and sample heavy music so same time yeah. same place 8 p.m twitch.tv slash hot takes vapor follow some of the links i posted <laughs> don't miss and, it guys come yeah, on come strip, on strip silence baby in two weeks thank you so much and have a good night